Hello, and welcome to the Everyday Board Game Podcast with your hosts, Daniel. And Daniel. And today we have a very special guest. We have the one, the only, you've heard his name plenty of times on this podcast before. This is Damn It Dom. <laughs> Say hello to the viewers. Hello, everybody. I'm here to get them to buy board games. <laughs> That's right. We're going to be talking. We have a pretty wild episode coming up. We don't yet know how long it's going to be. I know half of this shelf is because of this guy, right? Um, that's that's what he's known for. The the reason he's called Dammit Dom, and we've touched base on this before, but I think it's worth bringing up since this is the first time you've been in video chat with us on, on the podcast, is because there is all many, many times where you've brought in a game of yours, we've played it, and as soon as we're done, you're like, what do you think? Damn it, Tom, now I gotta <laughs> buy it. And and your tastes of games have infiltrated ours quite thoroughly. Mine more so than you. What what are one of your proudest examples of the of of that? Oh, I don't know. Um Actually, the Reckoners. Uh, <laughs> the Reckoners is pretty good. I don't yet own it, so it's I not, mean, in all honesty, that actually made me read a book series, as well as our friend Game oh, and Geek read right. a book series. That branched to a different <laughs> medium. Not, not even, not even just like, oh, we'll buy the game. No, we're gonna now get into the universe of it, thanks to this guy. Oh man. And uh, by the way, also, when we reference all the way from New Orleans, that's also this yeah. guy. <laughs> Damn it, Dom has a double connotation. We either spend money or somehow he kicked our butts in a game. Yeah, like he'll be losing through the first half of the game and then suddenly just decimate us somehow. It's like, you just ha decide not to get points for this first half. We're already pushing like 100 points or whatever in a game. And you're like, all right, cool, I'm going to end with 400. That's fine. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> yeah, it's broken. It's shenanigans. But anyway, that's... This is Dom. Um, he's going to be joining us on today's episode because we thought it would be quicker than trying to get tiebreakers or flipping the coin mm -hmm. because we have a really weird episode today. Tell us yeah. what it is. So today's episode, we're doing a board game breakdown, and we decided we wanted to do something quite different than what we normally do. So normally how we always have something up on the screen, we're using basically a publisher, designer, or something, and we're just breaking down their library. We're going to re-rank the top 100 games on Board Game Geek and decide which games we think should be the number one through 100. That's right. What are your thoughts on this episode? When we brought it to you, what, what, what did you think? I thought it was a great idea. I mean, it, it's fun because you you always play a lot of the games. You don't play them all, but you play a lot of the top 100, and you kind of go, okay, I kind of have my feelings on it. And, yeah, maybe this the board game geek doesn't quite resonate with you the way it does everybody else and you're like okay I think this is the number one game or I think this is a top ten game not necessarily the games that are already there right yeah, yeah. I agree with everything he's saying uh, I think a lot of this is uh, subjective and so and my big thing issue with uh, board game geek recently too is the number one game of all time yeah gloomhaven shouldn't be sitting in the spot for the longest time but it was getting review bomb for another game to get a sure. push and so that was my issue with the way that how they weight the board game geek rankings. Right, and it's interesting because like I can't think of a better system, and I and I'm not saying that it's flawed because there's no system that's perfect, right? No, yeah, exactly. When you're having people objectively or subjectively rate mm -hmm. things, you know, you're gonna have those differences. And one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of the games that are on the top 100 aren't necessarily like the ones that are the most beloved amongst games. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the the game that I think has like the most owned like copies is either Pandemic, Carcassonne, or Ticket to Ride. One of those three that most people claim that they've owned on the website. Mm -hmm. But those are not the top 100 because not, not that they don't like it, it's just it's that they, they don't always push it or the people who really like it, who have played these very specific games, uh, really like those games. Yeah. And the people who would probably rate it lower anyway, they probably just not play it in the first place so they wouldn't rate it. Um, which makes it interesting. Like mm -hmm. You're going to see a lot of heavy games and we're going to be judging them some of these games without us ever playing it so uh and just basis on what we kind of know of the right. game because i want to say i've played about two-thirds of the games i don't remember the exact number but i'm about two-thirds of the way i want to say i'm about half maybe mm -hmm. two-thirds up there same thing somewhere in there half to two-thirds okay. um i can't think of there's a few like yeah. the we 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 got a sneak peek of one of the matchups that's going to come up, and only one of these games I haven't played out of the two that we're going to be we're going to use Pub Meeple Pub Meeple for the ranking system, yeah. and so one of these games I haven't played, but I know enough about it where I know what my decision would be in the right. next 
Yeah, and if that's the case, I would. I'm probably going to compare it like, what do I know about the game, and does that excite me to want to play it? Mm -hmm. Would be like, if if it if it promised exactly what I think it is, what would I rate that game? Right. So like one of these games, like the one that we're going to talk about, it's like I know what I think it does. So if if it did that perfectly. In my opinion, how would I rank that from like a one to ten scale, and yeah. how does that compare to the game that I actually did play? Cool. Uh, one more question before we get going into our next step is: What are your guys' overall thoughts on the Board Game Geek Top 100 games? Do you think they have it right? Do they, you think they have the right games in there, or should they have other games that should be in there? Uh, from my point of view, I think there's some. I think it skews a little heavier than it should. Um, I think there are a lot of family weight games out there uh, that a few of them should at least be included in the top 100 mm -hmm. uh, because those tend to get played more. I mean, I just know from my per own personal experience, it's easier to teach the family weight game than it is to teach your heavier weight game to uh, even gamers. Yeah. So, you but, know, I think that there's, there's probably a little skewing. I do have to agree with Danny, though, that I do think it is probably the best system for what we have. Right. I'm not sure there's any other way to rank them. Well, you know, now that I think about it, I, th I can only think of one system that's better, and that's what we're going to do today. <laughs> the way we're going to do it is definitively without bias. No, I don't know. No. Um, it is bias. No, but it makes sense, right? Like, yeah. Um, these games, I think that they are for uh, what, what they're trying to offer, what these games offer to the people who have played them, they have delivered on that on that idea. It's like, um, there, there's a book that's being uh, released right now by our friends over at Level 99 Games, Brad, mm -hmm. um, the designer of that, he's writing a game, uh, a book about game design. And he said that a good game is a game that promises on the reason why you sat down to play it. Simple as that. If, if you're like, if you want to play Monopoly and you're like, I want to wheel and deal, I want to buy and sell real estate, I'm okay with chance because that makes it exciting. If you sit down and it delivers on that promise, then it's a good game to you, right? And I feel like the ranking system that they have with the exception of a couple of bad examples of, like, you know, the, the whole hierarchy battle that uh, Brass and Gloomhaven did. Oh. That, that, that's, on the, that's a bad sign of the user of and it's not misusing the system. But I think the vast majority of the games that are on the top 100 are there because they delivered on that promise of what they were yeah. looking for. And I don't disagree with that. Uh, the ranking system, like, I agree with both of you. There's, like, how do we do it better right. in a sense? My issue is that they're allowing people to rank games before they're out, and then right. It, that that's the thing is like people are getting uh, ranked bombed, uh, right. even though the game hasn't come out because they don't like Simon or they don't like the right. designer and stuff like that. Or in, in the case or, here, publisher uh, Stonemaier Games get really hit a lot of times because they just don't like Stonemaier Games. Sure. Uh, for no other reason other than the fact they never played the game, they never play tested the game, they don't right. know uh, how the game actually is. It's a Stonemaier game, so I'm going to rate it a 1. And then there's others that we've seen as we're going who will rate a game a 1 because the publishers will rate the game a 10 because they want to hype up their game and try to get right. into the algorithm and stuff like that. So it's just it's that push and pull. I don't know how you would do it better, but sure. something's got to be fixed. Right. And it, and it is interesting. Like For the example of like the game that I designed, right? Mm -hmm. I saw there was like one, one player who played it. There's only like 35 reviews or something like that, or 35 ratings. But because one player, they're like, oh, I didn't like it that much, so I rated it a 2 out of 10. It dropped a 1,000 places mm -hmm. on Board Game Geek, right? But then again, like some of that traffic, if your game isn't being talked about, how could you realistically get that pool? Especially and when it comes from like smaller publishers and right. stuff like that. Yeah. So like, I don't know the algorithm that they use to rank it, but I do feel like it probably does a pretty good job. Yeah. I don't think there's going to be too, any, too many games that, outside of our bias, where we're like, how is this in the top 100? I really don't. And before we get into the main part of today's episode, uh, do you guys have any other points to bring up? No. Okay. Uh, so real quick, uh, we want to give a big shout out to pubmeeple.com and their ranking engine. You can do it for not only just board games, a whole bunch of different stuff. And we've used it a number of times when we come up with our top 100s. And we're going to be using it today. Um, it's a free service, but really they, they accept um, support donations. Go support them. They're awesome. Yeah, and then uh, another caveat that we want to do for this episode, normally we'll do mm -hmm. the board game news. That is going to go next week for Board Game Brainstorm. Yep. We are going to put the uh, what we do outside of gaming on a slight hold uh, just because we wanted to get Dom in, and the main thing is because we wanted to talk to Dam and Dom about what <laughs> you've been playing lately. Well, let's see. Lately, uh, 
uh, last week was kick ass for the first time. <laughs> What's your language? Right? This is a family <laughs> podcast, sir. Sorry. Damn it, Tom. Let me tell you. <laughs> Sorry, kick ass the board game. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll go with the full title. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Uh, that's one of the harder cooperatives we have played. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, by far. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it pretty much follows pretty the movie tough. if you if you've watched the movie. <laughs> Or read the uh, comics. Or read the comics. You will get it handed to you to begin with, uh, and you have to figure out how to get <laughs> to the final boss. Right. Uh, and the other big one I uh, played a little bit was uh, actually... Uh, oh, we'll get into your second one now. Is he here? Yeah, we'll, we'll make a loop. All right. <laughs> but tell us about Kick-Ass, though. So, um, we, uh, and this was, uh, with Kick-Ass, this was just basically the basic mm-hmm. uh, minion... Yeah, that uh, was basic. basic. <laughs> this is the basic minion, and we almost got a butt handed to us. Well, we it, were also learning, right? You know, we were learning. <laughs> so it, it did, you know, did take us a little bit to catch on to what yep. we needed to do and and how each character played because each character plays completely differently. Right. And if you don't use your character the way it's supposed to be used, it will come back to bite you. <laughs> oh yeah, I learned that halfway through the game. And I'm like, okay, no, I got to start getting my stuff <laughs> so, over here because. Yeah. I'm accruing all this money. This card allows me to use all this money I'm accruing. Yeah. So, Daniel, what was your thoughts on, on the game? I thought it was it was a fun game. Uh, it's one of those where it didn't turn into a damn it dom moment because I'm like, this is not going to play well with my other group. But like, if he brought it out to play again, I would be more than happy to. Sure. I enjoyed how it worked. I, I felt a lot of the movie and the comic book in the, the game it's, itself. I want to say, though, we did get screwed in the very beginning of this game, because not only are we playing, like, we the basic stuff, person, yeah. the first bad event that came out was probably one of the more <laughs> difficult characters you have to fight with, and yeah. he was just chunking us left and right, putting really everything was. out there. So we had to do, like, like 13 damage or something, and we're yeah. like, we don't even know how to fight yet. <laughs> the, Guys, like, it, what? Huh? It's basically the equivalent of getting Water Rises on, like, your first turn in right. uh, Forbidden Island. <laughs> yeah, that's that's about right. No, I, I mean, I, I know the reference you're making. <laughs> um, and, I, and I take offense to it. So, so from my point of view on the game, um, like, I thought it was enjoyable. Now... I don't know anything about the source material. I really don't. I've never seen the movies, never saw the comics. I, to be honest, I totally didn't even remember that it was based on a, <laughs> a comic or anything. I, like, I vaguely remember this title, whatever. So I was going into it, it's like, I don't know, let's just see what happens. And despite it being as long as it was, um, I mostly enjoyed it, actually. I had a pretty good time playing it. I would probably play it again. Um, it doesn't it doesn't do the thing that a lot of IP games do and that it overloads you with so much lore that mm-hmm. unless you know the source material, you just can't function in the game. Like, And even though the characters have their quirks that, I could pro- that you could probably utilize better if you understand those characters, my guy was uh, Dr. Gravity, right? Mm-hmm. Was that yeah. him? Yeah. So, like, I mean, I know what gravity is, so I can figure that out, right? And then I just looking through his cards, it's like, oh, he just gets happy a lot. Like, he's a he's a very charismatic character. And then a lot of his special things are just, like, pulling people towards him or pushing him away. Okay. Like, that functionally makes sense. And that's a really easy idea to, ma- to, to make with that. So, overall, I liked it. Um, I don't know if I would buy it, personally. But, again... One of the things with IP games that I think about when I play it is, does this game make me want to go look into the source material more? Like it did with Firefly or Star Trek Panic. Like, those are my two prime examples. I got into the TV series because of the board games. This is actually one that I'm like, I might watch a movie out of it. Like, like knowing, now knowing a little bit more about it, I'd be curious about it. Don't watch and it with not, your kids. I wasn't planning <laughs> on it. But, <laughs> no, but I mean, like, it, like, there's a lot of times we play IP games with our group. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And yeah. one we'll be talking about soon, and that like that one didn't get me excited to look at the source material. Kickass kind of did. Yeah. Nice. All right, so I'm going to go next. Uh, the first game I'm going to talk about here is a game that you and me played while we were waiting to play Kickass. Yep. A uh, nice little small all-play game. Uh, I think it's in their one minute or one minute one minute, teach to right? yep. one minute to learn. Yeah, that one. It's called Dandelions. Uh, and honestly, with this one, I thought it was quite interesting. My gripe with this game. Is it says two to three players? Well, why why are you saying two to three? It should just say two or yeah, three. Yeah, that's not a range. That's an option. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a coin flip. No. Like, you can't play two it solo. or three. You can't play it solo and you can't play with four. So it's a weird yeah. player count. 
Yeah. But the game itself is a good implementation of the roll and move mechanism that you wouldn't expect in a sense. He's like, mm-hmm. I'm going to use this six, I'm going to move this character this way, and then I'm going to get my points based on here. So you, you've played Tumbling Dice, wherever they land, they multiply basically, so mm-hmm. you're going to get how many dice are on this section times whatever section it is. So if I have three dice on the four section, I'm getting 12 points. Yep. And then whoever has the largest grouping of dice there are going to add up their pips and get the points there. And it's that simple. It yep. plays that quickly. Uh, it was really simple to learn. We were looking at it like, it can't be that easy. Yep. You know, the most difficult part is how to read the scoring sheet. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we were like, wait, side wait. Which way do we, we go with this? Times? That Other was... than that, it was yeah. it was a fine little game. I'm glad I picked it up. I uh, got it relatively cheap not, uh, cheap not too long ago, so uh, I like it. Uh, it's something that's going to stay in my collection. It's just not going to get played a lot because one, two-player games don't get played a lot. It's not a two-player game. It's a two- or three-player game. But I also don't play a lot of three-player oh, games, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of, eh. Yeah, I've always, like, I mean, like, Catan, like, one of the best-selling games of all time is technically three or four players, right? Like, I hate that a small range of players, unless you're just, like, like just play it this many. Like yeah. this is the this is the number you should play. It's like going. It's like oh, it's you know, uh, what's a good example? A like oh, uh, Final Girl. Mm-hmm. You can either play it by yourself. You can play it one player, or you can play it solitaire. So many options, yeah. right? It's like that's nah, you're you're feeding me something here, and but yeah, I I feel the same way. But having followed up with that, I demoed it a lot at our shop that mm-hmm. recently. I sat in on a lot of the games. And I've really gone to appreciate, like, when you land on a spot and you had a die of the same number, how you can push the others away. That was a really fun That's dynamic anyone, that yeah. as you started developing that idea, you're like, okay, like, I'm going to push you over here. That'll give you a majority, but it's a one anyway, so that's fine. But I don't, I want to take the majority on this because I have sixes on here. Like, that that was a cool that's little a, dichotomy yeah. that, that was underutilized in our game, but, like, now that I, I see it. I think we it's... used it once, and it actually worked out in my favor because yeah. I moved one of my dice into the area which had a higher number, and yes. it increased my die total on that section. You are like, mm. And then yeah. I moved you into, like, the one. So yeah. I moved uh, one of my dice into the four section, and I moved your die into the one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, w- it was pretty wild. Yeah, and it, I liked it a lot. Uh, yeah, good choice. All right. All right. The first game I want to talk about um, is a game that you, I think, might still have on your shelf of opportunity, or shelf of shame. Pile of um, shame. It's pile covered of shame. right now. Yep. <laughs> that we all, I think we all picked up this game... At around the same time, but it is the next one in the line of just one, two, so a little oh, bit yeah, of fun yeah, facts, yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is more of a party setting game, this is Champions, I finally got this to the table. So, Champions, if you played uh, Cranium Party Playoff, which, first off, if you do, you're old, but if you, if you haven't played it, the idea is that you have like basically a bracket, and you debate the options, and you choose what it is, and that's what I thought... I was going to play when I played Champions. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite different. Okay. So at the beginning of the round, you lay out eight characters that you guys pick, like all of the people pick. So you might put like Marilyn Monroe. You might put Grandma. I might put, um, I don't know, Baby Hitler for all I know. I don't know. You just put like these random characters and they come with cards in case you do have it. In case you are. Notice the the last person here picked Hitler. Sir, you know. (laughs) I'm just saying, because that came up in our game. <laughs> that, was, that was fresh in my mind, apparently, because I was like, all right, that should not... But then the the option was, who's most likely to drool in their sleep? I'm like, come on, it's a baby. <laughs> like, of course it is. Unfortunately, I don't want that to move on, but it's true. Uh, but anyway. So you voted for baby Hitler, no, too. So, hold on. <laughs> Let me tell you how the game plays. <laughs> so you have these eight characters, and you have seven cards out. And each of these cards have, like, a question, like... Um, who would, I'm going to use the, the party playoff example, who could eat more hot dogs right, in a hot dog eating contest, whatever. And so you you see all the questions, you see all the characters, and you make your prediction of who's going to win that bracket. Okay. That's it. And that will only give you bonus points if you're correct on that. You erase everything else. So it's not about trying to push your character to the end. It's about trying to understand who's going to get on for each round. Because unlike party playoff, where you're benefiting by moving on, what you're actually trying to go for at points is to be wow. the, in the correct category. So, like, for example, a hot dog eating contest, you could say a mime or Betty White, right? We all take our vote card. We do not discuss it at all. And we all just vote simultaneously, and whichever wins moves on, and everybody gets points for that being part of that correct answer. 
And more often than not, during our gameplay, it was like six of us, there was a single person who was the odd person out. It's like, who would win an arm wrestling contest? And I, I want to say it was like um, Tom Holland or, or Eminem, right? That was one of our examples. And only my wife said Eminem. And everybody else was like, Tom Holland. It's like, Eminem hasn't, like, lifted a finger. Like, he's a lyricist, sure. And he's but, old. Like, and he's old. But he, like, he wouldn't be in an arm wrestling kind of rap battle, sure. But, like, and then the, the fact that you discuss after you choose the answer instead of argue your way to the to, to the answer is what makes it actually a really fun dynamic. It's, it's cool enough where you can have both in your collection and still have a fun idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. What is your second game, damn it, though? Uh, it was uh, Century Golem Edition. Uh, so it's a regular one, hits the table quite a bit. Um, and if you haven't played it, it's just simply a game. You're, it's a trading game basically. You trade, car you uh, trade gems for more gems to buy cards, and you, you know, most points wins at the end of the game. Five, six cards. That's it. It's pretty quick. It's fun. That's why it hits the table a lot. So. Yeah, that's why we talk about it all the time. Yeah, too. we talk about it a lot in our episodes. And and again, like based on the description, nothing against your description. Mm -hmm. Like the game sounds mundane and boring, mm -hmm. but it's incredibly exciting. <laughs> it really it's a is. really good game. It's quick. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, there, there's a lot of action packs. You, it always makes you feel clever. I don't think I've ever. It's seen one of the first games I ever left. played with the where it's like, uh, I action retrieval. I think it's what yeah. it mm -hmm. turned out to be yeah. where. You, you put the cards down, the that's your action, that turn, and then you have to take a whole action to pick everything back yes. up. Mm -hmm. I, that one is really neat to me, so. Yeah. Uh, Which is one of the reasons we like Concordia. For that same reason, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I actually just played another one, Aquatica, that does that same yeah, thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Aquatica was another one. And it brings everything back. Uh, another one that was uh, pretty big on it, uh, Concordia, Aquatica. There was another one, I can't remember. Because yep. uh, we, we did a whole top eight, because we played on actually mm -hmm. a lot of these. Yep. Concordia ended up winning that, but... Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on to my next pick here, and my last pick of the day is a game that me and Dammit Dawn played. You had to leave that night. It was a game that we played right yeah. after Castles of Burgundy. Uh, Gamehead yeah. Geek was with us as well, and this is Veil of Eternity. I'm curious about this. Yeah. Uh, so it has it's very interesting uh, mechanistic wise because you got like a little bit of deck building, but you got a little bit of snake drafting. And you have like little in interesting choices that you have to make, and then you have these card plays that really work. And so, how many cards you can have in your tableau is based on how big the round is right now. So in the first round, you can only have one card in front of you, okay. and the fifth or sixth round, you can have five or six cards in front of you. I found that was really interesting. I do uh, uh, a fun, fun uh, aspect of it. What I liked about it is that snake draft because you're like. Right. Ooh, I want this, but I don't have the first pick yeah. this round. So it's like, okay, now i got to find what the second best card is in there. Because you put uh, as many cards uh, times two per player. So in three car or a three-player game, you have six cards. And so you have the first person who's like, I'm going to go for this card because it's a very powerful card. And so I'm like, okay, I know for a fact that card is very powerful. It's not going to be there for me when I come back. I have mm -hmm. the last pick in the round. So I have to figure out what two cards I really want to go for because it's Snake Draft. So if I'm the third pick, I get the fourth pick as well. Okay. And so, and then once those picks are done, on your turn you have a choice of taking the card into your hand or chucking that card and you get point or coins in a sense based on what the, for selling the card basically. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, you're only allowed four coins okay but you can't make change or anything like that so if i have four ones i can't make it into a three and a one it, you're stuck with four ones and you have to spin those ones to buy uh, a different mm -hmm. card it's it's very interesting how you have to push and pull okay. how you get in those coins mm -hmm. because you can't make change yeah. i can't say like i'm gonna spin this six to pay for the four here and i'll get two back no you spin the six you spin the six to pay yeah. for your four car yep. you overspin yeah. for your specific card that's fun and then you have to make a decide and there's a whole other choice you have to make if you're in the say the second round and i want to put a third card out yeah. uh okay i have to pick up a card and then there's a whole rule on that because you have to spend coins based on the round to get that card back. Okay. <laughs> and it goes back into your hand. You don't discard it. 
and then you put out your new card which you have to spin for that one as well so it's a very interesting push and pull it gives you that little like deck building almost aspect but your action yeah. selection as well and then you go into the next phase once everybody's done their turns which is called like the refresh phase or something like that where all the cards will trigger and you cannot choose not to take an action so if you have a card there that says you have to bring back a card into your hand. You yeah. have to take a card back into your hand. Okay. So it is it's very interesting, uh, and there's two ways to end the game. It either goes into the 10th round, and the, uh, after that you do the final scoring, or you uh, someone hits 60 points, and then you finish off the round. Gotcha. Okay. Fantastic little small card game. I really did enjoy it. What did you think? Oh, it was great. Um, there was, it, it was interesting because the first round I went third. And I had my plan. I'm like, okay, these two guys are gonna go for these these cards, and they completely blew it up. <laughs> they went for <laughs> for different cards, and it was like, wait, no, that's so. I ended up with two cards I never thought I would have gotten. Yep. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> you know, it's like the, the these two cards are gonna be gone. So my plan is, hey, I'm gonna take these two cards. They look like they combo pretty well together. Right. Because that's the other thing you're looking for. You're looking for cards that combo together. Sure. <laughs> Um, so, and it started out, and it ended up turning out that it was actually better for me to take the two cards I took than it was the two cards I had originally <laughs> planned for. So, it's, it, in, there were there were a couple interesting things, like the automatic triggers, if you have your engine set up right, you're just, you start accumulating points quick. It's just like, boom, 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 done. Next thing you know, okay, I've got 30 points. Wait, how did that happen? So... And in, in the draft, the other thing that's really cool about the draft, uh, because it's random, not all the time do the big cards come out. So sometimes you're just sitting there going like, okay, we've got six small cards, mm -hmm. but the small cards can be pretty powerful too. Like You, you assume that the big cards are going to be powerful because they cost more. Yep. But if you put the, uh, the small cards in the right order, whew, all of a sudden, you know, you've got this little three, four card engine that just goes. I mean... I, it reminded me a lot of uh, Res Arcana, mm -hmm. where if you it, once you got your engine running, like it was really good, really solid, and you mm -hmm. just go okay. But you know it had the cool other thing of the draft, that snake draft. If you went first, you better know which card you wanted and how it worked in your engine, because if not, mm -hmm. you were going to end up basically you take something and then not use it. Mm -hmm. And so that, that, in a lot of cases, can end up worse. Than... And the thing about it, too, is like if, if there's a thing that you think is a really good card, you can actually hate draft in this one. And so it's quite interesting how it works, because you'll be like, I know they want that card. It doesn't work with my engine, mm -hmm. but I have the first pick. So I'll put it on there, and then I'll chuck it, because then chucking mm -hmm. it is going to give me enough cash to buy the cards that I am going to pick up. The That's other... cool. So I, I did really like that one. That was the other cool thing is that the way that the actually getting the coins worked. Yep. You had to ch the the first round you had to chuck one card to play a card. Basically, is what it comes down to. Okay. And then after that, you had to figure out if if your cards kept giving you coins, then you could keep working off of it. You could play more cards. If they didn't, then it was still get one, chuck one, and then trying okay. to manipulate your coins into enough that you could just you know play something. Uh, and not like you said, it, you don't want to get caught with four ones or anything like that. And the other thing too, when you draft, you also are going to get um, on the board. It's whatever the coins are there. So it made it made it interesting. There was a lot of a lot of decision space in this like small card game. It, it sounds almost like the like the bloody end in a way. Like like a lot. It's like kind not technically multi use, but it kind of is multi use. Like of how you're spending some cards to get others. Kind or... of yeah. Okay. It's just the that the cards themselves. Your decision uh, basically in the very beginning of the game, if you want money, is you have to get rid of one of the two mm -hmm. cards you're drafting. Yep. That is your decision. And the other one, you can get money if you just don't kill any of the guests. They're going to give you money sure. at the end of the round. This one has that little interesting push and pull where it's like, how do I do this? Do I want to... I like both of these cards. Which one's going to do better for me now? And then, like when we were playing it, I didn't chuck both those cards in the first round. Because I'm like, yeah. I think for a fact, I'll get a better card to chuck next time around. Because this way I can get these cards out in front of me. So I didn't have any cards out in front of me in the first round. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. 
And the next one I want to talk about, yeah, that does, I actually, I'm really excited to play that. Um, the last one I wanted to talk about today, which will be the last one we talk about, um, it is a game that I know you have played, and I think we played it with Game Head Geek, and I don't think you've played it. It's a small whiz kids game, um, and I can only talk a little bit about it because there is spoilers in it. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, did, did you play this one by chance? No, he, oh, no, I think he did. I don't which remember. Is it? It's a game called Unboxed by WizKids. It just came out like last year. No, I didn't play okay. it. Yeah, so I can only say so much, but the idea of this game is that we are archaeologists and also board game enthusiasts. Who knew? And you're given 10 scenarios, and each scenario, you're given effectively the components to make a game, and you're given a little bit of backstory with like, um, like what they believe that the name of the game would be. Like the very first one, um, I want to say it's called The King's Curse, right? And you have to take out the cards that it says to bring out, and you bring out all the components, which is just normally like some wooden discs or maybe some punch board. And without giving any context, you're given a few questions. It's like, what, like what's the optimal setup? What does a player do on their turn? What is this? And this is what you're trying to figure out by observing the components and trying things out. And it encourages people to experiment with the idea, play the games even. They're like, hey, let's just try it this way. Let's see if this makes sense or whatever. And it's such a weird meta idea. Um, I saw a, a review for it recently in, in uh, Dice Tower, Tom Vassell. He hated it. Oh, like, yeah. He absolutely <laughs> hated it. He was like, I teach the games. I don't want to hand people a game that I can't teach because they got to figure like that. No, <laughs> we have rules for a reason. Like, and he went on this long rant about how he just was really frustrated in it. Mm -hmm. Well, I brought it to my other game group on my Friday group, and we played it, and... I told him, I was like, hey guys, I already know how to play the first game. Like, I've already answered it, so I, I'm going to let you guys try it. And if it's interesting, then I'll try the next scenario with you. We played four <laughs> scenarios back to back. <laughs> and every single one of them is a drastic change. And we're like, okay, this could work this way, this is this way. Uh, and finally, in the fourth game, we didn't get a perfect score. We got one question that was slightly off. Oh, okay. uh, just because it wasn't immediately obvious on how certain parts uh, scored or manipulated or did whatever they needed to do. But the games themselves were actually pretty fun. And and the whole idea of, like, let's just see if this makes sense to play it. I remember when you, me, and Gamehead Geek played it, um, there was one part where it's like, I don't think this is supposed to work this way. And you're and we were all just like, well, let's just try it both ways. And yep. See what makes sense to me. And and turns out he was overthinking it a little bit. But, and we are like, all right, we're going to vote two to one. Yeah. We're going to say it's this way. And then you and I were right. Yeah. And he was like, I see what I'm, I see what it says. And I get, I get your guys' reason. But I still think it could be this way. Like, yeah, it could be. Because That's it, the point, yeah. yeah. And it brings it back to like games like Senate, right? That are thousands of years old. How did people figure this out? Well, they had to be familiar with like what were the games that were around that time? What were the translations that they already knew? How could they do this thing with the components? What did these symbols mean? Like and it was a really cool idea. And so far, I I've been we've had a blast. I rarely play do you ever play a game four times in a row? Yes. Like, which ones? Like, like real quick, punchy ones, right? Yeah, similar. Sometimes. Actually. Similar, right. Uh, almost innocent. I played that thing. Okay, that's <laughs> a bit beefier. Than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, okay, that's fair. Because it uh, it changes it up every, every time, time, right? Yeah. yeah, so I can I can see that. But no, we had a fantastic experience with it. I, that's been one of my newest, like, all-time fun little box games. I'm curious to get to the end and see how it ends. All right, so we're going to get into today's episode. We have a fun one. This is the Board Game Breakdown. We're going to re-rank the 100 games that are in the top 100 Board Game Geek. Now, again, full disclosure, we have not played all these games. <laughs> Some of it will be entirely uh, subjective bias on what we think the game is, and we'll try to explain our reasonings once, once we get there. But, of course, if you're joining us on a live episode today, uh, voice your opinion in the chat. Um, it will not qualify as far as which ones we're picking. He's no our tiebreaker. He's our tiebreaker today. <laughs> we did that so we didn't have to flip a coin a bunch of times. But uh, we're going to get into this. Daniel, are you ready to jump over? I am. How Bob, about you, Damn it, Ready to go. Ready to go. All right, let's go. I'm going to set up my clipboard because we don't need this for that. All right. So as you can see on the screen here, we have two different games. Again, we're using the Pub Meeple ranking system. Um, we're going to try and go fairly fast, but... Right here we have Dominant Species and Dune Imperium. Which one are you thinking, guys? Well, I, I already know which one. I, I, as much as I know what I know, I haven't played Dominant Species. Mm. What I know of that game, I want to play it once. Mm. Just to say I played it. Right. Other than that, yeah. I don't want anything to do with it. It looks intense. It looks like a long <laughs> game. It looks like you're, you know, 
build that and the components look awful personally um not that that's mattered for me but I, GMT, it's, it's even bad for me <laughs> right so i mean yes. but i am going to say dominant species for myself because i didn't like dune imperium all that much oh i love dune imperium i think that is a nice implementation of an ip plus the deck building worker placement game john sure. So I'm going to have to agree with Daniel on this one. <laughs> uh, Dune Imperium, it, it really worked well with the implementation of the IP. Dominant Species, from what I've heard, like him, I'd play it one time just to see. And who knows, maybe I, I end up liking it. But to me, just from what I know of it, I would say Dune Imperium, easy. Yeah, yeah. and, and now just so you know, for the podcast listeners, Daniel won Daniel too. Uh, <laughs> just just, sorry. just like our jersey numbers. Yeah, were uh, okay. <laughs> All right, well, this one's easy for me. I haven't played either of them. Maracaibo is the one that intrigues me the most. I'm just not a big Cthulhu uh, fan. I own both these games. I have not played Maracaibo yet. Yeah. I mean, I would gladly play Maracaibo. It looks really interesting. Dom, uh, which one would you pick? So I'm interested in playing Maracaibo. I really like Cthulhu Death May Die. It is one of those games that it's easy to set up. You just get it on the table and you can go. Um, uh, yeah, for me. So one of our criteria when we're talking about games, and from what I know about Maracaibo, will not fit this criteria. I think the game is going to be fantastic. It's an Alec, uh, Alexander Fister. I don't know how much you would like Maracaibo because those big box Fister games you have not enjoyed. I don't tend to. No. You're <laughs> right. I, but, I mean, I also really like... Eric Lane games are, are a hit and a miss for me, personally. But I know he's not... involved in that. Eric Lang and Rob Davio. And that's why I pick True. Cthulhu Death May Die. For right. me, outside of, say, Arkham Horror LCG, yep. this is the best implementation of a HP Lovecraft uh, system, uh, gaming stuff, the lore. Okay. Because they don't follow, they just use the HP Lovecraft stuff. They made their own lore for yep. this uh, game. And that's what I really like about it. So my pick also is Cthulhu Death May Die. All right, cool. Moves on. Fair enough for me. Uh, Mechs vs. Minions. Uh, so Mechs vs. Minions vs. Crokinole. I, I've owned both. I've only sold away one, and that was Crokinole. Mechs vs. Minions, it's just the programming is awesome. The pieces the, are amazing. I'm going to be the odd man out. I like Mechs vs. Minions. I think it's a fine game. Uh, I'm just not big into like programming games and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I, I pick Crokinole. I have a blast playing this game every time I get a chance. Well, I do like the sturdy games. I am going to have to go with Daniel 2 on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Mechs vs. Minions, yeah. by far. <laughs> That's it's pretty right. easy. It, no, it's a yeah. cool game, yeah. It's a great game. It's super neat how it does. All right, so we have Decrypto and the crew, Mission Deep Sea. Um, I mean, I, I like Mission <coughs> Deep Sea a bit. Um, like, I mean, I like the scenarios. It's fun. But I adore Decrypto, so that's mine. Uh, this one's tough for me. Uh, now, I haven't played Mission Deep Sea, and I think the original crew is on this as well. Yeah. But I love just cooperative deck building games. But I love the crypto too. I think it's a fantastic game. I think it's a great party game. But for I, I would have to go the crew, honestly. I'm gonna have to go with Daniel one on this one. <laughs> the crew. Okay. Uh, I do like the crypto. Uh, in some cases, though, I felt it was a little too easy for what it did, um, especially with the table talk. And when the crew uh, is uh, New, New Orleans, Orleans right? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, then that means the crew moves on. Daniel, start off. Start us off with this one. All right, so the next two here is Mage Knight, the board game, and Nemesis. And so for this one, it's a little intriguing to me. I have not played Mage Knight. Uh, I've heard really good things about this game. I, I heard it's a fantastic game. I have played Nemesis, and I do like Nemesis. It's just one of those games that could have been a Damn but Dom game, but I just don't think it would go well in my other game group. Like, if I had a bunch of shelf space, yeah, I'd probably end up buying this game because I think sure. Awakened Realms really knocked it out of the park. So my pick is Nemesis. Well, for me, this is easy. It's Nemesis as well. I mean, I most of the Wake Realms games I like. Uh, this one, they did it right. I mean, I'm not big on the semi-co-op, but when we played it, it was like, okay, how, how do we manipulate the situation in our favor? It was great. Yep. Um, out of the two, I've only played one. I played Nemesis. I didn't like Nemesis all that much. So I guess I would go Mage Knight. But I also know how heavy it's supposed to be too. It's a lot of Chavadal, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't 
I don't care. That, that's the one thing that's been high, uh, just, you know, not getting me to go to Mage Knight. It's just yeah. because how heavy I've heard it is. I think it's supposed to be like a deck builder or something like that. Some, I don't know. It yeah. is like one of the heaviest games out there. Yeah. Yeah. So Nemesis it is. All right. Ooh. This is Boa and Concordia. You start us off. So this one, never played Lisboa. Lisboa is one that I would like to play once. Uh, Concordia is one that I can go back to without a problem. I mean, I really enjoyed our play of it. Uh, and is one that eventually will end up in my collection. So I'm going Concordia. Yeah, um, same here. Like, as much as Lisboa looks fun, Concordia has a very special place in our hearts. That's a damn it, Daniel, because I got you guys to just like adore that game. And it's one of the few that ascended in our podcast. And mm-hmm. So it's won like the champion of champions. So, I mean, Concordia is a brilliant game. That's my. Uh, I'm not going to sound like a broken record here, but I'm going to sound like a broken record. Uh, my my choice is Concordia too, to the point where it's sitting in my collection right above Dom's head over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, to give Lisboa its due, I do want to play it. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a very uh, historical game in a sense because you're sure. rebuilding Lisboa after the Great Earthquake in I think it's like 1807 or something like that. Uh, so I really do want to try this one a yeah. lot because of that reasoning, but. I like Concordia. It, again, it's one of those things we were talking about. Like, I love the action retrieval mechanism in this game. We talked about it at the very top of this podcast. So Concordia, yeah, has to go on. Cool. All right, I'll start this one off. So Take the Grail, <laughs> Fall of Avalon, and Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. Um, this is interesting to me. Um, I haven't played Tainted Grail yet. Um, I am very intrigued by it. It does look really fun. I love Arthurian Legends, and that's what it's based off of. But it's like a very dark tone on it. It's very intriguing to me. I have played the entirety of Clank Legacies Acquisition Incorporated. And honestly, I think it's one of the worst legacies I've played. Um, I get why people like it. It just it doesn't it doesn't justify it being a legacy game. It was just you add in a module every time, in my opinion. Again, I'm not gonna go into spoilers. I just I, I don't discredit anybody who liked it, but I was I was disappointed knowing what legacies can be. So mine is Tainted Grail. Uh, my pick is going to be... Uh, I haven't been a fan of Clank, uh, especially because I've only played the first edition Clank. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm going to feel about Legacy Acquisition. I would like to try it. Sure. I've always been intrigued with Tainted Grail. Uh, I love yeah. Arthurian Legend. I love what I've seen of this game. So for my pick would be Tainted Grail. But Dom, what is your pick? So interestingly enough, while I like Awakened Realms... I'm going to actually go the opposite direction because I really like Clank, and Clank goes over well yeah, in my family. So I'm going to go with Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. All right, so Paint the Grill. Paint the Grill, yep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is a tough one for you, damn it, Dawn. <laughs> oh, all right. Start us off. All right, so for me, out of these two, Twilight Imperium 4th Edition, I love this game. I think it's a fantastic game. But I also like Underwater Cities a lot. Both of these games are actually quite heavy, <laughs> heavier than you would expect. You know Twilight Imperium is going to be a heavy game. It's a 4X game. Yep. It's going to take you several hours. We were lucky enough we played a three-player game of it in about four and a half, five hours. Yep. Uh, so I thought that was fantastic. We played it this You finally got to play this one. Finally, this year, uh, yeah. For me, my pick, just because of how thematic it really feels, I'm going to go with TI4. Uh, this is a tough one because I like both of these games a lot. <laughs> I know this is this is a damn it dom one here. <laughs> yeah, this is because uh, I really do like what Underwater Cities does uh, mechanistically, but I think I am gonna have to go with Twilight Imperium because when we when he gets to the table, it is just it's it doesn't matter whether it's four hours, six hours. It's just complete fun. You don't even think about how much time has yep. gone by. All of a sudden, you look up and you're just like, oh, it's been five hours. And to me, that that's a sign of a good game. When yes. you can't, yep. you know, you can't do it. It's a sign of a great game. I mean, yep. you can't even tell how much time you've been playing. Yep. Yeah, and and so I like heavier Euro games just fine. I thought Underwater Cities did an okay job of it. Um, I am not a fan of 4X games, and I was ecstatic after Twilight <laughs> Period. So that's got to be my pick. It was so fun. It really out. It really outdid it, my expectations for it. All right, moving on. We got uh, Clans of Caledonia versus Twilight Struggle. Damn it, Dom, this is you. So Twilight Struggle, I I like the historical aspects of, but I really like the economy of Clans of Caledonia. It it was interesting. I, the plays I've gotten of Cal- Clans of Caledonia have been very interesting because they're all different. Whereas Twilight Struggle, 
the couple of times I've played it and I've played it on the app have mostly played out the same way. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna go with Clans of Caledonia. Alright, so I have not played Clans of Caledonia. Um, it does look interesting. Again, it's like the style I would normally like, but um, taking a leap of faith, I tried out Twilight Struggle. I love Twilight Struggle. It is so fun. And, and it's just so dynamic. It's not as it's not a good enough game comparatively, but it's a fantastic experience, and I like that experience that it brought to it. Just the stand-up moments, unlike almost any mm -hmm. others. So, uh, I've again, I haven't played Clans of Caledonia either. Everything I've researched about this one, I think it would be a great game, and I would enjoy the mess out of this. The economic yep. system looks very interesting in this game. But I loved... I was very hesitant with Twilight Struggle. I was like, it's mm -hmm. historical. It looks really neat. Yeah. I didn't know how I would you like were it. very apprehensive when we played yeah, it. Yeah, and he's like... Dude, I, I know it's not my pick. Well, it is my pick. Uh, everybody else is not. So I'm not going to force another pick on you guys. Uh, but I need to get this played because I really want to play this. I was like, okay, that's fine. If you want to use your pick to do a two-player game, just a two-player mm -hmm. pick in a sense. Okay, fine. I fell in love with this game. I would have no problem adding this to my collection, even though knowing it would not get played. Right. No. Because it's that good of a game. Like I, right. I know you said you play the app. Playing the physical game when you have those cards, I won on like the last minute because he would have beat me yep. in the next round because of tiebreaker. That was one turn away from winning. <laughs> yeah. That was that stand up moment. I had all of Europe. I was ready to go. It was just like, and he just irked it, it out. It and I got so lucky enough is that I was able to, because I had most of Asia mm -hmm. under communist control. Yeah. And so I pushed me into the I win 20. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that might be why, like you haven't played it directly with the person. That might be the reason. So a possibility. Let's pass around the coin of doom to know who starts each round. Okay. okay. So I'll start us off on this next one. All right. So, uh, Through the Ages, the story of civilization, and uh, King caveat. of Death Monster. Both Through the Ages is in this one, too. So this is the first Through the Ages. Okay. Is this the one that you that we played? No. Okay. So I haven't played either of these. Um, I don't care to play either of them. They're not really my style. But I'm curious to see what <laughs> King of Death Monster, like all the people are raving about. So that's probably my pick. Oh, it's to me, huh? Yeah, let's go Conquest. Okay. Uh, for me, out of the two, I know which one I would like more. Uh, I've played the pre or the the successor of Through the Ages. Uh, I know they fixed a lot of stuff. Uh, Nations was basically the revamp of this specific Through the Ages. Mm -hmm. And then Through the Ages, uh, A New Dawn or whatever it is, was the revamp because of Nations. I would pick out of these two, I'd pick Through the Ages because I just love Civ games. I Hands down, I love Civ games. So you have the tiebreaker. <laughs> So in this one, uh, I'm thinking, I think through the ages, I'm going to have to go, uh, because I do like Civ games, um, really like Civ games. Uh, Kim Death Monster seems like another dungeon crawl, you know, it, it, depending on the it story. Does. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say probably through the ages. Okay. There you go. All right, so the next two games here, we have Kanban EV, a game that we haven't played, and Converna, the Cave Farmers, a game we have played. Uh, Kanban looks very interesting. I believe it's a Lacerda, if I remember yep. correctly. Mm -hmm. It looks really, really heavy. Um, I know for a fact that when you were trying to do the top 100 games, getting a play to many, or the this ones that you haven't chance. played, this yeah. had a good chance. Our friend uh, Gamehead Geek does own this game. Out of these two, though... I am very hesitant with Lacerda games. I want to try them, but I'm also very scared of them because uh, they are like heavy, heavy games. And Caverna, who is made by a heavy board game designer, Uwe Rosenberg, yep. he can make some really heavy games. I do like Caverna a lot. But out of these two, I pick Kanban, actually. Yep. So for me, this one actually... I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to go with Caverna. I, I like what Caverna does. I like the ways... The way uh, he does this, uh, basically a lot of his stuff, I, I really do tend to like. Um, Kanban, well, interesting. I just to me, it's like I might only play it once. Caverna is something I can go back to and play a couple times, and it's one that eventually I want to have in my collection. Yeah, cool. And mine, um, as much as Kanban looks interesting. Um, I don't care about cars personally as a theme, so a heavy Euro game about building cars it's not the most exciting for me. So uh, in Caverna, I have played. And I but do you're like what literally it's doing. engine building. Yeah, yeah, I get it, but I don't know. 
I, I feel it without say it's welcome in a way that I wouldn't like. So I'm going Caverna. That's the point. Uh, here you go. Ooh. Oh. Easy for me. <laughs> Easy for me. <laughs> oh. I'm very interested in playing Too Many Bones. Have not played it yet. But this is pretty easy. Castle of Burgundy. I have the deluxe one. <laughs> this is we this just is recently played, played the deluxe, deluxe one. one. Yep. This is not a. Uh, <laughs> this is not even a question. Castles of Burgundy. I like what it does. I like. I like the simplicity of it and how it just moves forward. Uh, I have played both. Too many bones of trash. Castle of Burgundy moves on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every... <laughs> Send your hate mail to Daniel at everydayboardgames.com. It's not a real email. <laughs> All right, so too many bones. Looks interesting. I would wouldn't mind trying it. Uh, I don't take his uh, accreditation into this one because the components <laughs> are so much better than Castles of Burgundy. The base. <laughs> yeah. We'll this Castles of Burgundy is ugly. Like you wouldn't believe. This yep. is this is the one we always bring up when it comes to Olea games. Yep. But the the special edition just knocked this game out yep. of the park. I love some of the changes the special edition did by making the castles burgundy mm -hmm. rather than like the darker brown compared to the rest of the browns on the right. board. But yeah, this is a fantastic game. This is what put Stefan Feld on my map. So Castles of Burgundy has to move on for me. All right. That wasn't even an argument. So this is Terra Mystica versus Cascadia. I have played both. I really like the engine building in in Terra Mystica, but Cascadia definitely won the spiel for a reason. That's my vote. All right, so out of these two games, I own both. I've played one. Uh, the one is sitting on my pile of shame behind us over here. I like everything that Cascadia does. I like everything that I've seen that Terra Mystica does, so it looks very interesting. But out of these two, I'm thinking about the fact of which one is easier for me to get to the table, and Cascadia is by far the easiest one to get to the table when I'm thinking about my other game group, this game yep. group. If I just want to do something that's going to take about 30 to 45 minutes and get yep. more games in, Cascadia is my pick. From, from what I've seen, not to interrupt you, sorry. From what I've seen, I think once you play Terra Mystica, that's going to be, it's going to jump up way mm -hmm. high for you. So I play both of these. Uh... And I really liked what Terra Mystica did. I, I really did the the changing of the lands and and yep. so that that was mm -hmm. really that interesting. The, the thing. Rondell thing, yeah, yeah. that's so cool. Uh, but Cascadia, easily by far, is the is the game that cool. I would play more often, and that's <laughs> pretty much the biggest there criteria. We go. All right, you just got to clean something up real oh, quick. Oh, just so you know, viewers at home, he just found a number of performance issues that was notified to us. <laughs> oh, interesting. It. Star Wars versus Star Wars. Okay. All right, so out of both of these Star Wars, you got Star Wars Rebellion versus Star Wars Imperial Assault. One is a reskin of Descent, basically. Mm -hmm. It's a one versus many. Or you have a large and... don't. Uh, this is a two to four player game. It is a large two player game. A massive two player game that you use two actual folding boards. And Ticket to Ride size boards, you're using two of those. It is a massive, massive game. Which one is this? Is that Imperial Rebellion. Rebellion? That's Rebellion? That's Rebellion. Imperial Assault has uh, modular boards. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, no, out of these two, I've played both. I've enjoyed both. Star Wars Rebellion is a fantastic game, and it's my pick because it's the most thematic out of these two. Ooh, this is a tough one. Well, I haven't played Star Wars Rebellion yet. It is on my list of ones to play. I like what Imperial Assault does now that they've implemented the app. Where somebody it doesn't have to be basically the dungeon master. Uh, so I think I'm going to have to go with Imperial Assault because I like what it does and just the fact that you can you progress through the story. So, yeah, what, so uh, I know you haven't played, or well, you played one of them. I, I have not played either of them. So, however, Im Imperial Assault is the Sith right, Star yeah, Wars yeah. World. Mm -hmm. Star Wars Rebellion is basically um, the first Star Wars movie. Uh, you know, gotcha. Troops on yeah. a map type thing. Yeah. Um, honestly, no, because I know I know Imperial Assault is like a skirmish game, like with like 3D terrain, right? Am I, am I correct? No, 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 no. You're thinking, okay. uh, you think it's Shatterpoint? Oh, Shatterpoint, yes. Um, because that is the one. That Shatterpoint actually looked intriguing to me, and that's mm. why I'm thinking the two-player head-to-head. Like, if Imperial Assault is like... Uh, it's one versus many, so like the, the base of the game that we're describing here, not the app one mm. integrated, yeah. someone's playing like Darth Vader and the Stormtroopers, and mm. everybody else is playing the... Uh, the the Rebels. Yeah, I'd probably pick Imperial Assault then. Okay. Yeah, that would be the most likely I'd play. And there's the other through the ages. 
Yep. That's one we have played. <laughs> yes. Alrighty, Lords of Waterdeep and Through the Ages. I did like Through the Ages, but Lords of Waterdeep is one that keeps hitting my table. I it, it's that simple. Like I I can pretty much pull it out, play with anybody. Uh, like I said, family weight games tend to get played more, so I'm gonna go with Lords of Waterdeep. I liked what Through the Ages did. I didn't like what Lords of Waterdeep did. Uh, Through the Ages. I like both games fairly well. I love Through the Ages. It's my fa- one of my favorite games. Lords of Waterdeep, my biggest issue with this is that you have a Dungeons and Dragons license on it, and it is it's so freaking ugly. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It's cubes. Fair, fair enough. I'm going to my copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, cubes. really? This is what you guys go with? You have all these great minis that you could put in the game. You've done it before in the other Dungeons and Dragons stuff, and you give me cubes. Oh. Not even good-looking cubes, like blues and browns. and <laughs> So my pick is Through the Ages, because, again, I love Civ games. Cool. All right. So, uh, Lahav and I'm surprised Hedge with Mummy. this. It's already in the top 100. Yeah, lead your class to victory. I know nothing about Hedge Money. I really don't. Um, it is so... a massive, very heavy, almost Civ-like game. Cool, Lahav. <laughs> That's my pick. <laughs> that doesn't intrigue me at all. I've played Lahav. Hegemony uh, looks really, really cool. I'm one of the few people that just have not been a big fan of Lahav. And it might be because I've only played it as a two-player game. Right. I, I, my, yeah, yeah, I want to play it with a bigger grouping. I mm-hmm. think it might move a little bit better. Sure. I'm going to go with he- he- Hegemony. Uh, from everything I've seen on Hegemony, I mean, it sounds interesting. I haven't played either of these games. Uh but just in general, Lahav is more of the game I would want to play. Mm-hmm. I'd want to play it before I'd want to play Hegemony. Cool. Ooh. I've played one of these games. I have not played both of these games. I own one of these on my shelf of shame. But out of these two, Inish I found to be fun. I like the fact that you could be the pretender and then, then be able to win at the end of the round or something like that, depending on what happens. Sleeping Gods is the magnus opus for ryan lockett this game looks fantastic i was able to mess around with it look at the components and stuff like that when i was punching it out i want to get to this table i think this is going to be probably once i get it played it's going to get into my personal top 100 and maybe into my top 10 for everything i've read about this game so my my pick is sleeping guns so me i play both of these games and inish i like what it does but Sleeping Gods is easily, it, it outdistances it. Uh, the storytelling, you know, you, you can put 20 hours into it and then go back and put another 20 hours into it without a problem. I mean, and get a completely different outcome. And that, to me, is just like, that's mind-blowing that yep. you can do that. Uh, right, like games don't tend to hit well for me all that much. Like, I like them, they're fine, but fine has been the best I've ever thought. Um, so Inish would have been my pick. So, either way. Oh, I've actually played both these games. Oh, wait, no, we haven't played Barrage. I, I was thinking Barrage. it with uh, Flotilla. Yeah. So we've got uh, Azul and Barrage. Uh, Barrage looks interesting and is definitely one I've considered a couple of times. I've never pulled the trigger on it. Um, Azul, though, Azul has been in my collection since it came out, and it's staying there. Um, so it's it's easily Azul. I like what Azul does. I like the tile drafting, I, or the pool drafting out of there, uh, and just trying to outthink your opponent. Like, hey, okay, well if I do this, what's going to happen? How do I keep the keep from ending the round with a bunch of stuff I can't lo- uh, use? So to me, Azul. Uh, yeah, between these two, so I've liked all of the Azuls except for the last one, the most recent one. And if I was given the option to either get Barrage or the Azul I don't like, I'd probably still get the Azul I don't like. <laughs> so Azul's mine. Uh, out of these two, uh, I, I'd pick Azul too. I like what Barrage looks like. I don't know how well it would go down. It's just more and more older I get and the more and more I get into games, those really, really heavy Euros just don't really right. appe- appease me as much as they used to. So yeah, I agree with you, Azul. All right, cool. Um, Blood Rage or Robinson Crusoe, the Cursed Island. Blood Rage is fine, um, but I'm very curious to try Robinson Crusoe, so that's fine. Uh, my pick here is 
plain and simple, it's Blood Rage. I like the drafting. I love the fact that you can go full Loki and almost win the game. Basically, kill all your people. Right. Uh, I think that, that that is really neat uh, aspect of this game. It's probably one of the first Eric Lane games I truly fell in love with. Robinson Crusoe looks interesting, but again, it's one of those like heavier that has all this stuff going on. Blood Rage is just so simplistic, and I'll, my pick is Blood Rage. All right, tiebreaker. All righty. Well, for me, I like the idea of Robinson Crusoe because I really like co-ops. Uh, but Blood Rage, just the, the drafting, the way it plays, it, it's simple. You keep you you pick yourself a strategy, and you just work towards getting that strategy. Almost all the strategies are fairly equal. It is how well you play those strategies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, to me, uh, yeah, Blood Rage is just, it's one of those games. <laughs> yep, Blood Rage just moves on. All right. I, <laughs> Easy. I Easy like both of these games. I know which one you're picking. Yep. Uh, and it's probably going to be the one that moves on because it's probably the one I'm going to pick. But I want to give some credit for Search for Planet X. I think that game is fantastic. I love the deduction on, on this game. I love the app integration in this game because you're not asking someone to be like, is this this or this this or uh, like say something like Clue where you got to go under the board and see if you're correct or not. This one, you're just basically asking the app and it's telling you yes yep. or no. I like that aspect. But it's going up against Quacks of Quinlanburg and I play that hands down over most of the games we've already talked about. Yep. So while I do like bag building... Deduction though is is one of my top <laughs> top ones, uh, and and you know the search for Planet X like plays that I like the way it works. I like the fact that that even if you don't figure out where Planet X is, you can still win the game if you've done if you figured out where everything else is. So for me, search for Planet X um, easily quacks. <laughs> like, I mean, search for Planet X was cool. I like the deduction. It's a fun puzzle to work out. But quacks is just fun. Yeah, it's just fun. fun and it's yeah. silly, and it's all the all of the things I like in games. Ooh. Oh, 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 come on! <laughs> all right, so. Wow, I'd like to be Beyond the Sun. I own Beyond the Sun. I like the tech, the tech trees and all this. I also own Heat Pedal the Metal, and that's actually like for me. It's heat Pedal, problem. Heat Pedal the Metal actually goes over better with most of the people I play with, uh, just in general, uh, other than these two guys. <laughs> uh, so what do you mean I own both these games? Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to go with Heat Pedal to the Metal on this one. All right, so it's Beyond the Sun versus Heat Pedal to the Metal. Um, Beyond the Sun was the one that actually was a very pleasant surprise when we played it. I was it actually is, really it is impressed a very pleasant with it. Surprise. And then Heat was a little underwhelming because of all the hype it got before it. So honestly, Beyond the Sun is for me. Uh, this, one, this one's tough for me. I love both of these games. Yep. I'm going down on the fact of, based on one of our criteria, ease of play, which is the easiest one to get to the table. In case you can't decide. Here you go. No, no. I, I know which one I'm picking. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. As much as I like Beyond the Sun, it is a fantastic game. Uh, Tech Tree, the board game, just doesn't <laughs> yeah. go down as well as something that feels very uh, like you're in a race. Uh, and Heat does give you that buildup. I mean, the reason you might not care too much for it, we only did the, the preliminary one sure. round, and so if we played the full three rounds and you had to do yeah. the full three laps, I think you would have liked a little bit more. I'm going to pick Heat Pedal to the Metal. I just think it's a fantastic game. I love everything about it. In fact, I got the expansion after only one play. So Okay, fair enough. All right, so this is between Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, and Battlestar Galactica. I have zero interest in Battlestar Galactica, even though it's ranked so high. I know it's... um. Like possible hidden trader, it's technically the first deck builder. Whoever is that? No. Claims that. Or what? Which one is it? It's the it's the hidden trader where it's it's basically a large resistance. Right, but I know that this is also considered one of the first deck builder games because there's a deck build, building element into it. Yeah, I know. I agree. I don't care. Gloomhaven Jaws the Lion is awesome. Uh, this one's a no-brainer for me. As much as I love the Battlestar Galactica IP, I thought that series that it's specifically based off that version of Battlestar Galactica was probably one of the best shows I've ever seen growing up. Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion does the one thing I've been saying more board games need to do, and it teaches you how to play the game in the first five scenarios. Yes, it does. It's fantastic. I pick Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. So, well, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, I do own both of these. 
Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, I really do like what it did teaching you how to play Gloomhaven. But Battlestar Galactica was a game I hunted down. <laughs> <laughs> because I really do like the IP. I like the idea of how it works together. Uh, I'm hoping to get it at the table here soon. I'm down to play it. I've always wanted to try <laughs> it. So, yeah, I'm done. I, I'm going to go with Battlestar Galactica. Go. Nope. Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion moves on. Well, this is easy for me. <laughs> I played both of these games. One of these games has been banned from this house so, because of this guy. <laughs> it is, you never told me that. I was actually considering bringing it. Since he, no, he I don't mind it. playing it. My wife hates this game. Oh, sure. I get that. <laughs> because uh, it, it it was a bad role teach, in a sense. It was when he was first learning how to teach games. Tell the viewers what it is. <laughs> and that is Power Grid. The other one, especially this version of it, too. This is the brand new, really decked out version uh el grande uh -huh. i really do enjoy this game a lot it's a fun uh, implementation of area control that doesn't really do with dice chucking there is some uh lock ba based on it just based on the cube tower and stuff like that yeah. but i love everything that el grande has i actually want to pick up the specific copy of it so my pick is el grande interesting enough i haven't played either of these <laughs> games <laughs> Do you know <laughs> relatively what both of these do? Uh, El Grande is mostly area control. I do know that. Power Grid is... Economic. Economic, economic round building, building in a sense. sense. Okay. Because you're building the, the grid. So for me, area control is one of my favorite mechanisms. I'm going to have to probably go with El Grande. I want to play both of them. I do have a feeling that I would like Power Grid as well because I do like economic games as yep. well. So, Just don't uh, let this guy teach you. <laughs> Uh, I've got, he's, he's, he's got better I've got about better. it, so I'm pretty no, sure. I've played them both. I like them both. Power Grid would be my pick, though. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Fister. <laughs> Fister, you're a brother. <laughs> Come on now. Alrighty. Gaia Project. Haven't played Gaia Project yet, but uh, it's like uh, Terra Mystica. So Sci-Fi Terra Mystica. Sci-Fi Terra Mystica. Did play Great Western Trail. I actually did like what Great Western Trail did in the one play we had of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably gonna have to go with Great Western Trail, and the just because of the 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 combinations of mechanism work really well for me. The the move uh, the rondelle with the or should I say the large rondelle? Oh, right. <laughs> with, with it's, the, a it's, <laughs> it's a trail. It's not even a rondelle. It's a trail. trail. <laughs> no. uh, but it effectively works as a rondelle with yep. the uh, they call it deck building. It's more of deck collection. Uh, and then trading it in at the end. I I did like Great Western Trail. I thought it was too convoluted. I didn't like Great Western Trail. But if Gaia Project is like the space version of Terra Mystica, I like Terra Mystica quite a bit. So that would be Gaia Project. Out of these two, I like the sci-fi aspects of Gaia Project. But I did enjoy Great Western Trail. And honestly, we need more Western games. So my pick is Great Western Trail. It doesn't even compare to Western Legends, though. That's no, no, it does not. No. All right, Race for the Galaxy in Grand Austria Hotel. Um, I've played Race for the Galaxy. I own um, the Puerto Rico version, San Juan, um, which is, plays very sim similar. It is one of the least colorblind friendly games I've ever played, which is incredibly frustrating. I liked what it did, but I think San Juan does it significantly better. Grand Austria Hotel, I haven't, I haven't played, but I like everything that is coming across. Um, it, it's that right kind of ugly that fits well into my collection, so that's probably my vote is Grand Austria Hotel. All right, so my pick is going to be Grand Austria Hotel. I haven't played both of these games, but everything I've seen of Race for the Galaxy and having played San Juan, I don't want to touch Race for the Galaxy. Interesting. Could I go with Race for the Galaxy in this one? Because uh, I like a lot of what his stuff, Tom Lehman's stuff does. I haven't played either of these. I wouldn't not play Grand Austria Hotel. I mean, I'm interested to play it, but I do like what uh, Race for the Galaxy does. So. Cool. Yeah, yeah. This this one's very easy for me. I've actually played both of these games. One of these games is my number one game of all time for a reason. I love everything that Gloomhaven does. I like what Puerto Rico does, but this version that they have up there is one of the ugliest games I have ever played. <laughs> I struggled in our play of this because it's like, okay, what is this one again? What does this do again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the cubes and then the 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 yeah. the cardboard that gives you resources and they're a certain color and then the, yeah, no, Gloomhaven. Interestingly enough for me, I've, I I do own Gloomhaven. I'm going to get Puerto Rico when they get the new Blinged Out edition coming out. Exactly. From, I'll get from, that new one, yeah. From Awakened Realms. 
I'm gonna go with Puerto Rico. I did like what it did. I, I when we played it, we played it at five players, and it moved pretty quickly for for what it. I'll give it that, yeah. For what it was, and I enjoyed like just kind of figuring out how it all worked. So I'm gonna go with Puerto Rico. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go Puerto Rico as well, just because the action selection, how one player gets the good part and everybody gets a side mm -hmm. thing. That that's more interactive. I like the the dynamics of it. Versus Gloomhaven, yes, you have that cool card. Uh, you know, control that you have to do on your own deck, but you're right here. Your game is right there versus out there. You need to play more Gloomhaven. I do. You're but thinking you're just no, but here. You're trying to figure out what you're trying to do when you're playing your cards. You're like, how am I going to use my cards the most oh, effective man, you way? You got to play more of the scenarios. You no, 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 no. You, you can't change my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Puerto Rico significantly. <laughs> Gloomhaven is trash because now you said that. Yeah, I don't know. Puerto Rico's my pick. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all righty two uh, games daniel two absolutely loves <laughs> sure so sure. do i like orleans i play both of these games but only one of these games is in my collection and that's architects of the west kingdom i like what it does with the fact that it gives you all its worker your workers to begin with you build up and get stuff There'll be some differing opinions here. I can tell you that right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, I Every do like, time we're on this. Yeah. I do like the back building Orleans, but uh, for me, Architects of the West Kingdom. I'm not going to belabor okay. the point. Um, I didn't like New Orleans. I despised Architects of the West Kingdom. New Orleans, or Orleans would be my choice. Orleans. Mm. It's French. It does it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Architects of the West Kingdom. Like, what? Who cares? Or Leon's is my pick. Honestly, I'm not going to belabor the point. I like what Architects of West Kingdom. It's the only one of these two out of my collections. I did not enjoy Orion. It's fine. I like the bag building aspect. Quacks did the bag building so no, much better. Yeah. Uh, so my pick is Architects. All right. Fields of Arl versus On Mars. On Mars, I love that theme. I haven't played either of them. I, Even though I think Fields of Arl would probably <coughs> be the one I would like more, I very I, I love the On Mars theme, so I'd pick that. My pick as well is On Mars. Fields of Arl looks okay. It looks interesting. Uh, it is uh, what we would call a, a Danny game. Yeah, <laughs> it's something you would bring over. It's a new game. On so. Mars is On Mars is very gorgeous looking. Mm -hmm. I've seen the components. I the love the cover of this game. Mm -hmm. Everything about it. This is the Vita Lacerda game I would try. This is the one I would try. This is a Vito the Strike game I want to try. <laughs> if somebody had a copy of it and said, let's play right now, I would play it. Would not matter if I had to go to work the next day. You know? <laughs> I would sit down and play it. So I'm going to go on Mars That's as right. Well. So you heard it here. Us three guys, we're going to go scour all the game stores until we can finally find Fields of Arl and play it. <laughs> all right, moving on to Eclipse Second Dawn. And, oh, one of these games is very pretty. Both of these games are very long. <laughs> uh, out of the two, I've always wanted to try Food Chain Magnet. Uh, I think it's an interesting concept to a game. It looks interesting. The splatter games just don't hit my style. Out of these two, Eclipse Second Dawn is something that I would play hands down. I love the 4X style, the civilization, space, anything like that. Eclipse is my pick. So for me, this is pretty easy too. Uh, the splatter games just don't tend to hit with me. It's Eclipse Second Dawn. It is a game that I'm trying to get to my table because I do own a copy of it. <laughs> but as you said, it's really long, so it's not something we can just bring over for game night. We actually have to plan a day around it. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, Food Chain Magnet is the only one of these two that I've actually actively looked to, to possibly play just because I love that theme. It's a good theme. Pieces look like trash, though. Ooh. Ooh. I, I'm glad you guys are excited about it. Like, this is a pretty easy pick for me. So, having played both of these games, I, I like what Everdale does. I like the simplicity of Everdale. Compared to Paladins? Yeah. yeah. Compared to Paladins. But Paladins of the West Kingdom, I like the entire thing of how you build your engine in it on your own board. Um, so, to me, it's Paladins of the West Kingdom. You, you know, so actually, uh, recently I, I met somebody who was so excited to tell me that they had finally played Everdale, and they're like, eh. I'm like, I know, I get it, like, the same thing, it's like, it, it plays itself as it's supposed to be a simple game, and it, it's not difficult to play, it's just there's so much you have to keep track of at all times that it takes away from the simplicity, I think it's more frustrating, I think, Paladins is a really smart system that I like, I like quite a bit. Uh, and my, I'm going to not hammer the point. Paladins is my pick as well. I love Everdale. I am everything for Everdale. 
But if I had to choose out of these two games which one I want to get to the table, it'd be Paladins. Yep. Cool. All right. Wingspan or Anachrony? Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're both engine builders. I, I just, it, as much as I was a little let down from Anachrony, and I still own it, I don't plan on getting rid of it. I really was let down with Wingspan, personally. I, I get why everybody loves it. I, but Anachrony, I just feel like is a cooler system, cooler theme. I like that. I'm noticing on this one, he hates games that have hype. <laughs> he, he He's the yeah. hipster of this group, apparently. I guess so. I guess so. I don't know. Anachrony well, was cool. He's had a lot of hype. <laughs> yeah. I, I well, mean, but did you not hear him? He said he was let down with Anachrony, too. <laughs> yeah, I was let down with both of them, but less so with Anachrony. <laughs> Yeah, like just because, no, I love that that loan system of like you travel in time and you have to pay back that. That's a really neat idea, and it's a really interesting theme when you hit that part waypoint, like two thirds of the game, when the catastrophe happens mm -hmm. or when like you know the the whole game changes. Then it's all terrible from there. Wingspan, it's like yeah, it's cool, it's pretty birds, yeah, it's, it's fun stuff, yeah. But I don't know, it's too complicated. Well, for the thing is, uh, for me with like, these two, I love both these games. I think Anachrony's fine. It's just one of those games that I yep. don't need to own because there's multiple copies in our our game group. Yep. I like everything Anachrony does. Wingspan is in my top 100 for a reason. It's a game that I can actually get to the table with multiple groups. It's one of my favorite games because it did something different that you never really see. It really brought nature games to the forefront. And for my, for me, my pick is Wingspan for how much I love that game. So I, I really enjoyed our play of Anachrony. I, I do, like you said, that loan system is great. Like That is you know, neat. Borrow from yourself in the future, but you better pay it back or it's going to cost you. <laughs> um, but Wingspan is just, it, it's just simple, it's easy, it gets to the table, it yep. tells you how to it, how to play it without a problem, you know where everything goes, um, and you know how to fire off everything in it, so right. to me, it's Wingspan. Yeah, what good is a game that you really like that you'll never play versus mm -hmm. a game you tolerate and you play a lot? Yep. Right. Fair enough. All right, here we go. I mean, come on. <laughs> come on, people. All right, I mean, let's just skip this real quick. Or not skip it, but like... It's Agricola Agricola versus, versus Agricola Revised Edition. My pick edition. is the Revised Edition. Revised. All right, you can start on the next one. Revised moves on. Whatever. That No, stupid. All right, anyway. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I've never played... Pen I haven't played either of these games. I've played Aeon's End's uh, predecessor. The What is it or called? Sequel. Uh, yeah, Astro Knights, the sci-fi version of Aeon's End. Mm, that's right. Uh, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero looks very interesting. I have played the first Pandemic uh, Legacy. I l really enjoyed that one. I loved what Aeon's End uh, slash Astro Knight did for deck building. I like the fact that you do not shuffle your deck. And so when you're discarding your cards, you're trying to play them in a certain way. You get them right this way because the deck just flips over and that's going to be your new draw pile. Yeah. No shuffling whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I love the kind of boss battler aspect of it too. So my pick is Aeon's End. And to the fact... I just did a Kickstarter for the more re most recent Aeons in, just to get a, that into my system. So for me, I mean, the Pandemic Legacy stuff, I really do like, but the Aeons in, what it did for deck building, cause I, I just like what it did for deck building. Like, like you said, when you, you, you're you layering your cards, like, hey, okay, I know i got to pay this one first. It might not do me good this time, but next time, this is going to be a great card to play in order. So to me... It's Aeon's End. Um, I liked our play of Astro Knights in a game that's about deck building and not shuffling. I hated the random turn order. <laughs> that was stupid. That was stupid. That, that's fair that. enough. But um, I played Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. I think Am I the only one who has played yeah, Season so. Zero? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I played it in its entirety. I, I really liked what it did. It, it, took, it took an interesting take on it. So that Pandemic would be mine. Hey, look, more Pandemic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> season 2. Season 2. Or the Voyages this of Marco, Marco Polo. Polo, man. Ooh. That's tough. I've played both. Uh, we so, played per, uh, Marco Polo 2. Two, but oh, it, that's right. It's 1.5 it, yeah. version. Yeah. Um, so, Pandemic Legacy Season 2, I haven't played yet. It is in my collection to play. But we did play, like I said, we played Marco Polo 2. I really did like what it did. I really want to play with Voyages of Marco Polo because I played that, that second one. So, I'm going to go with the Voyages of Marco Polo. Yep, uh, I like them both, but Pandemic Legacy Season 2 was just, I thought it was better. I've played both of them. Uh, I'm only partially into uh, Season 2. I like what it's doing, and it's basically just more Pandemic in aspects. I really liked that game of Marco Polo 2, mm -hmm. and Voyages takes a lot from that as well, or uh, Marco Polo 2 takes a lot from what Voyages right. does. So my pick is actually going to be Voyages of Marco Polo. Okay, cool. Moves on. 
I think once we hit the hour, let's take a quick break and then we'll reconvene. Pandemic Legacy Season 1, Feast for Odin's. I was let down with Feast for Odin. Pandemic Legacy Season 1 was the reason I got into pe pe uh, Legacy games. And not only to the point, this almost unseated Carcassonne is my favorite game of all time. So, Pandemic Legacy Season 1, hands down. Out of these two games, I liked what Feast for Odin did. I thought it was fine. I think it was a... When I talked about Ryan Lockett's Magnus Opus, this was Uwe Rosenberg's. Like, all of his games you kind of see in Feast for Odin. Mm -hmm. But Pandemic Legacy Season 1 is a reason why it's ascended in our group, uh, in our top 8 debates. Oh. It is a fantastic game. That is my pick. So I really did like what Feast for Odin did. But I haven't played all the way through Pandemic uh, Legacy Season 1, but I do like what it's doing. I know. What what month are you on? Ish. We're, we're, I don't remember. It's been a while since we played. So. Have you seen the really big moment? No. Okay. okay. <laughs> Wait till you see that. You need to keep playing, bro. <laughs> there's, there's a big moment yeah. that's really neat. All right, here you go. All right, out of these two games, I really do want to try Obsession. I think it looks exactly up my alley. My, yeah. my wife would love this game because she's a big uh, Pride and Prejudice fan. And this has a lot to do with like Pride and Prejudice and stuff mm -hmm. like that. However, Viticulture is my go-to worker placement game. I love everything about it. I can get it to, to the table with a lot of people because it's wine. <laughs> a lot of people enjoy wine. And it's got one of the best components I would like to see more. The little glass drops that uh, highlight what you're doing in the wine fields or your aged grapes and stuff like that. So for me, my pick is Viticulture, especially the Essential Edition. So Viticulture, the Essential Edition. I've not played Obsession. I'd be interested in trying it, but Viticulture, like he said, to me, it's just a go-to game. It's easy. It's, you know, you get it to the table. People understand it. They understand what they're doing. It progresses nicely. Uh, so, Viticulture is mine. The little I've learned about Obsession, it does seem like it does some really interesting takes on it. And I thought Viticulture was fine, so mine would be Obsession. And you would be wrong. <laughs> All right. None of us have played it, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's amazing. Ooh, Don't Imperium versus Osworn in the Deep Wood. Uh, everything I've heard about Osworn tells me I'd like it. But I know for a fact I like Dune Imperium, so to me this is this is pretty easy. It's going to be Dune Imperium. I'm actually going to go Dune Imperium as well. I know nothing about Oath Sworn and that covering doing it for me and the theme from what it seems like it is. It's probably not my style. I don't so think Dune you Imperium. would. I don't think you would like Oath Sworn. It is at its core a boss battler game. Yeah. Dune Imperium is my pick as well. I enjoy everything about Dune Imperium, but Oath Sworn looks interesting. I do think I would like it. Okay. All right, uh, Dominant Species versus Oathsworn. Um, yeah, I mean, Dominant Species just sounds more interesting. I like the idea of evolving the dinosaurs. So, yeah, good. My pick on this one is Oathsworn into the Deep Wood. I, the, like I said, the concept of the boss battler really intrigues me. This one looks really cool, especially with the, some of those minis that I've seen. Yep. Uh, Dominant Species just, it looks like an old school Alea game almost. <laughs> yeah. So for me, this is going to be old sworn as well. Dominant species, just I mean, you got to pick up the <laughs> the pieces and make them nicer. I mean, <laughs> if they were nicer, I mean, it would probably actually be a contest with me. But in this case, with what boss battlers do, I tend yeah. to like boss battlers. So old sworn, old sworn. <laughs> so I'm glad you got this you, one. You guys struggle real quick. It is Cthulhu Death May Die versus Marvel Champions the card game. <laughs> This one's hard. I really do like Cthulhu Death May Die a lot. And I love Marvel Champions as well. Out of these two, I would have to pick Marvel Champions, the, the card game. As much as I like what Cthulhu Death May Die does, uh, I like the fact that Marvel Champions, you can play it just, a, in a sense, a boss battle there where you're playing against one bigger boss. Or if you get some of the expansion sets, it turns it into a campaign game as well. Okay. So you have your pick, and po pick your poison aspect of that one. Plus... I have a better chance of getting superheroes to the table than I do a big Cthulhu monster. So, well, like I said, I own everything for Cthulhu Death May Die. I also own everything for Marvel Champions. And I like the way those decks work. Mm -hmm. Those decks, I mean, they, they're all different. You're like, what can you do with a deck of cards and how can you make it different? They've done it. <laughs> it, it is, every single one plays different. Uh, so for me, it's going to be Marvel Champions. It doesn't matter my pick, but I would have picked Cthulhu. 
Oh, yeah. There's the original one. <laughs> <laughs> this is easy. Oh, this is for not me. so easy for me. Easy it's for easy me. for me. So, I like what... It, like I said, I like the idea of what Maximilians does. I played the crew. The crew, is, <laughs> the crew is one of the ones that's also easy to get the table with multiple game groups. I'm going with the crew. The crew is fine. Um, you know, I enjoyed the play of it, and I, I appreciate what it did. I almost Sparta kicked you guys up for Maximus <laughs> Minions. When we saw it, I was like, it's mine. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's mine. We're like, wait, what? What did we miss? Yeah. Oh. yeah, I dove at that shelf. Well, it's funny. I was sitting there like, all right, you guys have at it. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I like the game. It's just not going to get to the table. Yep. The crew will get to the table, so that's my pick. Okay, crew moves on. All right, the crew, Mission Deep Sea versus Lost Ruins of Arnak. Um, again, I, I, maybe it's just like, I'm not the biggest fan of the crew. Like there's plenty of trick taking games that I just think are more in, innovative that are more interesting. I mean, just making it cooperative instead of versus isn't, I don't think it's all that innovative. Um, I didn't like Lost Ruins of Arnak the first time I played it, but after the second play with the expansion, I really started appreciating it. So Lost Ruins. So for me, the reason why I like the crew a lot is the simple fact of, um, what what they did differently is that you're trying to feed the tricks mm -hmm. in the right order and i love that aspect i know you say it like others do things differently mm -hmm. i don't really see like how people are trying to feed tricks in the right order as especially as you get further along the game right. I, I like that aspect of the crew. Sure. out of these two though i'd pick lost ruins of arnak hands down i love the deck building aspect the worker i love the track system yeah. i love the fighting of the monsters and it looks good yeah. so my pick is lost ruins of our neck so they, these guys already know which direction i'm going but <laughs> i've played a ton of spades and i've played you know hearts things like that i like what the crew does but lost ruins of our neck is easily the it's the game you bring out like oh it's my pick it's my birthday we're playing lost ruins <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a hands down from all three of us yeah wow. all right lost ruins all right, Nemesis versus Concordia, Venus. This is the expansion, which is weird that they have like one of the expansions that's also standalone. Is it really in the top 100? Yes, it huh. is. It's like in the top 90, I think. Weird. Okay. Out of these two games, we've already talked about Nemesis. I pick Concordia, Venus. It because I'm picking Concordia over Nemesis. Yep. In this case, I think I'd actually go with Nemesis. I like the thematic elements of Nemesis I, better than I than the theme of <laughs> Concordia. It's it's that kind of that simple. So you guess what my pick is? I, I know what your pick yeah, is. I know what your pick is. <laughs> yep. I will say this on. about Nemesis. They got very close to aliens without <laughs> hitting copyright. <laughs> yeah. Uh, close enough. Yeah. No, Concordia. Easily. There you go. Hey, look, Concordia. No. Yep. Versus Mansions of Madness <laughs> Second Edition. Both of these are really good. Though. Both of these are really good. Yep. I do like what Mansions of Madness Second Edition did. The app integration is great. I, and I think it's the only way you can really play these type of games. But Concordia was, you know, I like the action selection and then having to pick up your cards and deciding when to do that. Yep. That, to me, is one of the greatest decisions you have to make. I was pleasantly surprised Concordia, by Mansions of Madness. Yeah, pleasantly surprised by Mansions of Madness, but Concordia was, like, overwhelmingly, like, surprising. And honestly, I agree with both of you. Uh, I think Mansions of Madness would move on if it was going up against most other games. But, but it's going against Concordia. Yeah. Concordia moves on. Mansions of Madness versus Lisboa. Again, I'm going to go back to it. I think I would like Lisboa better just because I like the euro -y style of it. Um, but I haven't played it. Mansions of Madness, while well, I liked it, um, I haven't been itching to go back. Uh, out of these two games, like I said, uh, Mansions of Madness would move on depending on who it goes up against. I think it will move on over Le Lisboa. I would prefer to play Mansions of Madness over it, even though I like what Lisboa does with the, the Euro-y feel to it in the historical concept to it. I just think Mansions of Madness just would hit my table a little bit more. Uh, in general, yeah, most of the green groups I play with, Mansions of Madness goes it would go over very much more than Lisboa, so I'm going to go with Mansions of Madness. All right. All right, Tainted Grill versus Clank. Well, my pick, I, I've already told you my feelings on Clank. I love the fact that they actually had to implement new rules because of the reason why I dislike Clank, the running gun system. Sure. Uh, for me, though, just that Arthurian legend is more likely for me to want to play, and that's Tainted Grill. So this is a tough one. Because uh, the Arthurian legend, yes. Awakened Realms, yes. But Clank gets to the table far more often than... Tainted Grail ever would, so I'm going to go with Clank. Tainted Grail, hands down. I like the Arthurian better. 
<laughs> well, that's an easy choice. So we have Clank <laughs> Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated versus Clank, a deck building game. So I'm saying it's an easy choice. For me. <laughs> okay. So for me, this is also it's fairly easy. Clank just gets to the table right now. I would like to try Acquisitions Incorporated. I do have it in my collection to try. But uh, Clank is already on the table and is just something I can pull out special my family and just go everybody knows how to play and your clank is like well, so. legacy versus non legacy more so like clank legacy would be better oh that surprise was a surprise out of these two uh i probably play uh, clank legacy more just for the i i want to see a story in all honesty you don't you make your own story basically in clank yep you have a story for yourself in legacy acquisitions acquire so cool all right, Twilight Struggle versus Twilight Imperium. <laughs> Battle of the Twilights, Twilight Struggle for me. Uh, for me on this one, this one's a little tough. I love both of these games. I like what they both do. I pick Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. I really do love that game. I perceive it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, this is pretty easy. It's Twilight Imperium. Yeah. They're both very good experiences. <laughs> yeah. <They're>... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> out of these Twilight two, Struggle versus Underwater Cities. Uh, out of these two, I really do like both of these games. I love what Underwater Cities do. I just was really enamored with uh, Twilight Struggle, so that's my pick. So I know which one's going to move on, but I'm going to go with Underwater Cities because I do like. I just like the card mechanisms and trying to match up. Like, hey, how do I get the maximum use out of these cards? So for me, it's Underwater Cities. Again, very pleasantly surprised by Twilight Struggle. Let's move it on. Ooh, Underwater Cities and Clans of Cal- uh, This one's actually... Mm. I do like the economics of Clans of Catalonia, but like I said, I like the, the card play mechanisms of Underwater Cities probably better. So I'm going to go with Underwater Cities. Again, I don't know much about Clans of Caledonia, so I'm going to go Underwater Cities just because I don't know enough about it to justify But maybe I would like Clans of Caledonia better. Uh, so for me, with this one, I would say Underwater Cities as well. Economic versus worker placement, uh, route building and stuff like mm. that. So yeah, I'd go Underwater Cities. Okay. All right, Zolkin versus Zolkin the Mayan Calendar versus twi- or Through the Ages: A Story of Civilization. Zolkin, love the pieces, love the idea, the concept works really well. That's got to be mine. I did the original Through the Ages in Zolkin the Mayan Calendar. I pick Zolkin. I love the gear that ages yep. your workers, mm-hmm. and so you have to decide when to pull them off to get those resources and yep. stuff like that. I like that uh, mechanism a lot. I want to see it m- more games do something mm-hmm. like that. I like Civ games, don't get me wrong, but if I had to choose between these two, Zulkins get to the table. Okay. Same here as Zulkin, and I want to see that gear mechanism in more games. <laughs> right. Caverna versus Tracarian Legends of Illusion. I've played Caverna. I like Caverna. I really want to play Tracarian. I like everything what it's supposed to do. It's a worker placement, magic game. I want to play it. My pick is Tracarian. I'm going to make this one tough for Danny. I'm going to Caverna. <laughs> But it, it, I want to play Tracarian, uh, but I know Danny actually likes both of these games. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. but I, I do. Caverna is the one game I have played, and I do like what it does. Uh, so, yeah. Oh. I mean, the theme alone, I like uh, Tracarian Legends of Illusion better. But the thing is, it was far more complicated than a magic themed game should have been. Um, so my vote is Tracarian, though, even though it was a little bit convoluted for what it was. Uh, the fact that you're sending workers out on both of these, the workers in Tracarion have their different specialties that work in different parts better, and that was a really interesting combination. All right, so that was the first part of our legs. Now we're going to start speed running this, so what that means is if we've already talked about the game, we're not going to be labor it anymore. We'll say our picks, and we'll say what the two games are. Dumb, begin. All right, okay. <laughs> this one's actually pretty easy for me. We haven't talked about Terraforming Mars yet. I love what Terraforming Mars does. It's Terraforming Mars, hands down. I like the card play and the board play. Yep. The other game is Castle of Burgundy. Uh, Terraforming Mars is fine. Castle of Burgundy is mine. Out of these two, as much as I like Terraforming Mars, and it is in my top 100, now that I've played the special edition, Castles of Burgundy be my pick. All right. All right. Terraforming Mars versus Too Many Bones. Didn't like Too Many Bones, Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars for me as well. Uh, Terraforming Mars as well. All right, we got Cascadia versus Brass Lincolnshire. Now, I have not played Brass Lincolnshire. I have played Brass Birmingham. I like what it does, but I pick Cascadia. Uh, I like the idea of Brass uh, Lincolnshire, but Cascadia, easy game to get to the table. It's going to be Cascadia. Haven't played either Brass. Want to? Haven't yet. Cascadia. 
Uh, Terramisca and Brass Lincolnshire. Actually, this is the two games I've played. I've played Terramisca. I really like what Terramisca does. Uh, probably better than I want to actually get Brass to the table. Yep. Terramisca was awesome in my play. Um, Terramisca is my pick out of these two. I like Brass Birmingham. I Again, I haven't played Lincolnshire. But it's it's too long for what it is. All right, the next two. Star Wars Imperial Assault or Teotihuacan, City of the Gods. Um, again, what I've heard from Star Wars, it doesn't sound that interesting, but Teotihuacan, it had its cool moments. Um, it's just a little too convoluted for what I liked, but so Teotihuacan is my pick. Teotihuacan is my pick as well. I love that game a lot. To the fact, I'm going to get rid of my copy here when I get my new Deluxified version. So I've already gotten rid of my copy of Teotihuacan because <laughs> I'm getting the new Deluxified version of Teotihuacan as well. Uh, Spirit Island versus Through the Ages. I know which one uh, Daniel 2 over there's pick yep. is. My personal pick is Through the Ages, the new story of civilization. I love that game a lot. Ooh, play both of these. Oh. I'm going to have to go with Cooperative in this one. Spirit Island, I think. The the way the characters work, it's it so asymmetric. It's so interesting. It's so neat. Spirit Island, hands down. La Havre and Brass Birmingham. Oh, I haven't played either of these. Like I said, I'm probably a little more interested to play Brass Birmingham than I am La Havre. Uh, I'll go with Brass Birmingham. I've played La Havre and I like it quite a bit. Brass Birmingham, who knows? So, uh -huh. I've played both. I've liked both to a certain extent. I would need to play La Havre more. I have played Brass Birmingham at a full player count. I'll go Brass. Okay. Brass moves on. All right, so we have Azul, Sleeping Gods. Hands down, Azul. Sleeping Gods. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with Sleeping Gods. Okay. Azul versus Inish. Azul. Uh, yeah, this is pretty easy. Azul. Azul. <laughs> uh, in this case, uh, Inish versus Barrage. I'm gonna go with Inish. Uh, Inish as well. Inish. Blood Rage versus Scythe. I'm gonna have to go Scythe. Oh, this one hurts me a lot. I like Scythe a lot. I like Blood Rage a lot. Out of these two, which one I think would get to the table more would be Blood Rage. So out of these two, with the stuff, the world building that Scythe does, to me, hands down, it's Scythe. Scythe moves on. Quacks versus Root. I already know my favorite out of this. Root is a coin game in a sense, asymmetrical powers. I pick Quacks. Uh, having played both of these, I really do like what Root does. Uh, but it's Quacks. Quacks is fun, easy to get to the table. Yeah, and, and Root, even though I liked it, I didn't like... You're still rolling dice for combat. Like, out of a game that's so supposed to be so strategic and asymmetric, random win, kind of? I, I don't know. Quacks is just... It, at least it doesn't try and kid itself at how unserious it is. Yeah. Quacks. Easily. Ooh, Root versus <laughs> Search for <laughs> Planet X. Um, actually, in this one, I'm going to have to go with the deduction and the Search for Planet X. I really do like what that game does. Search for Planet X. Same. Search for Planet X. Cool. All right. Heat, Pedal of Metal versus Arkham Horror, the card game. Now, I know you're going to talk about Arkham Horror, but, um, yeah, it looks fun. I, I can't wait to play it eventually, which you'll teach me eventually, hopefully, Daniel. Yeah. I'm teaching him this week. <laughs> Eventually you'll teach me, right? Yeah. I'm no, teaching it, him. I'm teaching Dan and Dom. Arkham Horror does look cool, but uh, Heat, you know, it was it was interesting, so I'm going to go Heat. Oh, uh, Arkham Horror is by far one of the best living card games or any game in the Cthulhu mythos uh, stuff. Uh, so my pick is Arkham Horror. So of these two, as he said, he's teaching me this week, so this may change, but as of today, it is Heat. Uh, tech, tech Tree, the board game, Beyond the Sun versus Arkham Horror, the card game. Arkham Horror for me. Uh, for me, Beyond the Sun in this case. Like I said, Beyond the Sun. This week. Yep. Ooh, Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion, or Great Western Jazz. I didn't even know the second edition was in here. Um, probably go with the second edition. Uh, Great Western Trail, second edition. edition. Yep, again, it doesn't. I, I don't care if it's second edition, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Yep. All right. Great Western Trails, second edition versus Battlestar Galactica, the board game, probably BSG. Yeah, I'd, I agree. But I, I like Great Western Trail. BSG is something I'm interested in playing. Yep. Uh, Battlestar Galactica as well. Out of these two, we got El, Grand, uh, El Grande versus Arc Nova. As much as I like El Grande, I love Arc Nova. It's one of my favorite games. I'm picking Arc Nova. 
So, I've never played El Grande. I love area control, but Arc Nova, the stuff it does, I mean, there are a few detractions to it, but I really do like what Arc Nova does. So, even though I don't like area control that mm-hmm. much and all that stuff, and I really liked what Arc Nova was doing, I like that system, I think Walt Disney Animated did it better, so I'm going to go El Grande. <laughs> Great Western Trail <laughs> versus and- Android Netrunner. I've never had the ability to play Android Netrunner, so I... I'm going to need to fix that. <laughs> Um, this is so, a card one, right? Or is yeah, the like, card one. So for me, it's Great Western Trial. Uh, I love Netrunner. It's so good. I still have my collection. I'm still going to keep doing it. Netrunner, easily. Not a fan of Netrunner. Great Western Trail. Okay. Netrunner versus Gaia Project. Battle of the Space Games, Android Netrunner. Gaia Project. Uh, Probably Gaia Project. Fair enough. All right. Grand Austria Hotel versus The Gallerist. Uh, I... Vaguely no Gallerist. I think that's a lesser of a game as well. Yep. Grand yes. Austria Hotel is my pick. Uh, for me, Grand Austria Hotel, I'm more interested in learning. I, I'm i interested in the theming of the Gallerist because you're buying and selling mm-hmm. art. But again, it builds in like a big heavy euro and like an economic game. Grand Austria Hotel seems more straightforward and I think it'd be more of my speed. Ooh, Gallerist versus Race for the Galaxy. I'm going to have to go with Race for the Galaxy. I just like what Race for the Galaxy does. I uh, played it, and it's simpler than what I know the Gallerist will be. Yeah, if um, there was a non-colorblind, like, hating version for Race <laughs> for the Galaxy, I probably would like it significantly better. So I'm going to go Race for the Galaxy. Same. All right, we have Architects of the West Kingdom and Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Architects of the West Kingdom. Architects of the West Kingdom. I have not oh. played Frosthaven. I know how I'm going to like it. I, I like some of the stuff that they've added to it because you're actually building the uh, Frost Haven. Out of these two, I'd probably get Frost Haven played more, but On Mars just really intrigues me, so I'm going to pick that one. I'm going to have to go with On Mars as well. I'm going On Mars as well. Ooh, we haven't oh. talked about five tribes yet. <laughs> <laughs> I like 4X games, but mm-hmm. Moncala, Five Tribes, just the, the the modularity of the board, to be able to pick up meeples, move them around, trying to figure out what your best move is. I'm going to go with Five Tribes. Moncala is one of my favorite mechanisms, Five Tribes. Bruno Cathal is one of my favorite designers, Five Tribes. <laughs> all right. We're all in agreement mm-hmm. today. Paladins of the West Kingdom versus Equi- Eclipse New Dawn for the Galaxy First Paladins. Mm-hmm. Paladins. Paladins. <laughs> Everdale versus Eclipse, New Dawn for the Galaxy, the first edition, Everdale. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Everdale on this one. I feel like we should take out the first editions of some of these games. I mean, I can drop them out, but yeah. we have to rank them, so yep, when they come up, we'll just take them out. Oh, um, Eclipse versus Everdale, uh, probably Eclipse. I'd, I'd be curious to try it. Wingspan versus Pax Premier, second edition. Uh, when we see a little bit on Pax Premier... I'd be interested to try it, but Wingspan, like I said, easy to teach, easy to get to the table, and it makes sense to most people. Um, even though Pax Premier looks like a really complicated game and a really involved experience, which I don't think would be my speed, uh, I think I'm going to go with Pax Premier still, just because I think, I already know I'm not the biggest fan of Wingspan. He hates birds, that's all it is. Apparently. They're Wingspan. robots, right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Pax Premier versus Anachrony, I already know I like Anachrony. 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 Agricola Revised Edition versus War of the Rings Second Edition. Um, two player games don't really get played a lot, but the one I do want to try more as much as I like Agricola, War of the Ring. Uh, just the theme alone. Uh, I've played the, the regular Agricola before. I'm going to go with War of the Ring because I want to try War of the Ring much more than I want to play Agricola again. I like Agricola a lot, so that's mm-hmm. fine. Ooh. Anne's End and Seven Wonders Duel. Oh, I really like both of these games. Uh, I'm probably actually going to have to go with Seven Wonders Duel. I just like what it does to two players. I like the drafting mechanism, how it, it makes you make choices on where to draft and might necessarily not be the, the optimal choice for you, but it's a choice that you don't give somebody else something yeah. that you don't know what's coming up. Um, th- I, I do quite like Seven Wonders Duel. Uh, Because it destroyed Seven Wonders, in my opinion. 
Um, but Aeon Zen, I'd be curious to see what it does more than I want to play Duel again. So Aeon Zen. Out of these two games, I like Aeon Zen a lot. Seven Wonders Duel, I don't own anymore. And that's just for the simple fact two-player games don't get played in the house. But out of these two, I pick Seven Wonders Duel. Okay. Alright, Seven Wonders Base versus Voyages of Marco Polo. Easy. I don't like Seven Wonders that much. Voyages of Marco Polo. Uh, I agree with you, Voyages of Marco Polo. I, I need to get Seven Wonders into my collection just to have all the Kinder Spills. So I really like Seven Wonders. So to me, it would actually be Seven Wonders. Okay. Pandemic Season Legacy 2, uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 2 versus Seven Wonders, I'd pick uh, Season 2. Uh, I'd go Seven Wonders here again. I really do like it, and it tends to get to the table. Season 2. Ooh. Bill <laughs> Culture versus Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Uh, for me, this is pretty easy. I really like Viticulture. I like what it does, so it's Viticulture. Uh, Pandemic Legacy Season 1, hands down. I play both of them. I enjoy both of them. I'd rather play Viticulture. Wait, that is me. Uh, season one, Pandemic Legacy, season one versus Obsession. Again, only one of these games has attempted to unseat my favorite game of all time. Season one. Uh, I'm actually gonna go with Obsession. As much as I uh, Obsession, as much as I like Legacy, season one. At a point, even uh, you could tell it's one of the older Legacy games. You still feel like you're playing uh, Pandemic all the way through the game. It doesn't really change too too much for my liking. Uh, so for me, I think I'm going to go with Pandemic Legacy Season 1, because Obsession, while I'd like to play it, I definitely want to get Legacy Season 1 back to the table. I don't blame you. You haven't finished it. Out of these two, I have played Feast for Odin. I'd rather play Obsession. I like Feast for Odin, but it's not something I want to play again. Uh, for me, I'd, a Feast for Odin, I'd play it again without a problem, so, yeah, Feast for Odin. Obsession. Ooh, 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 ooh <laughs> on yours. All right, Marvel Champions versus Dune Imperium. Um, actually, for me, this isn't that hard. I would go Marvel Champions. I just like what it does better. They're both great implementations of mm -hmm. uh, IPs, yeah. IPs. Dune Imperium. Marvel Champions. Dune Imperium versus Cthulhu, Death May Die, Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah, Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> Dune Imperium uh, versus Mar Maracaibo. Dune Imperium for me. Uh, one I've played, one I haven't played. Uh, interested in playing it, but Dune Imperium. Maracaibo. <laughs> uh, for me, this would be... Pirates versus Boss Battler. battler. Uh, I would go with the Boss Battler. Pirates. Yar. Boss <laughs> Battler. Maracaibo versus Dominant Species. Ooh, I think I would like... I think... I think I would actually like Dominant Species better from everything I've heard. I mean, it's even though the, the pieces are so ugly and it's so weird and it's kind of old for like the top game, it's been on this list for a reason and I want to know what that reason is. Maracaibo. I'm going to have to go with Pirates and Maracaibo. Ooh, this one's a little tougher for me. As much as I like the crew, uh, Quest for Planet Nine and Lost Ruins of Arnak, I'm going to go with Lost Ruins. I'm going with Lost Ruins as well. Lost Ruins. <laughs> Which one do we want to keep? <laughs> yeah, let's get rid of one of them. Which one do we like better? We're going to shrink down this list a, a bit. All right, so we have the crew, Mission Deep Sea versus the crew. I'm going to keep both of them in night. here, but every time uh, one of them comes up, it's all automatically lost. This way, because we only have 100 games in this. No, just delete it. It won't It won't shrink the ranking at all. Okay, yeah. so, um, so... I think all crew... of us have played uh, Planet Nine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, played, get... I played Deep Sea as well. Have you played Deep Sea? I have not. I have it. But well, okay. we'll just keep Deep uh, Planet Nine then. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, click OK. There we go. There we go. All right. Uh, so for me, uh, this is easy. The crew uh, versus Decrypto. Mine's Decrypto. Crew. Okay. Decrypto versus <laughs> Mexorus Minions. Ooh, that's actually tough for me, but I'm probably going to go Decrypto, actually. As much as I like Max vs. Minions, I this, haven't played this it. This is actually really tough for me. I do like both of these games. I'm going to go to Crypto as well. Yeah. I would probably actually go, in this case, Max vs. Minions, but I really like the Crypto. So. I think once I play it more, it'll be it'll be easier. We're going to get right. rid of Venus. Get rid of Venus. Mm -hmm. Concordia versus Concordia Venus. We're going to get rid of Venus. Oh, right. this one's Concordia easy. Concordia versus Nemesis. 
Oh, uh, crap, I already... Yeah. That's yeah. fine. And no, 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 Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition versus Mage Knight the board game. I haven't played Mage Knight, so I'm going to go Mansions of Madness. Mansions. Mansions. Uh, Lisboa versus Mage Knight the board game. I'm going to go Lisboa. The the theme just hits me a little bit better. Yep. I like the fantasy uh, setting, I think, a little better. I'm going to go Mage Knight. I'm going to go Lisboa. For the same reason you said. Ooh. For me, whew. The Twilight, we have Twilight <laughs> Imperium 4th Edition versus Tainted Grail, uh, The Fall of Avalon. I'm going to go with Twilight Imperium. I really do like the plays we've had of it. TI4 is really impressive. Uh, I'm going to go with TI4 as well. As much as I do want to get Tainted Grail to the table and play it, yep. I just love TI4. Yep. Tainted Grail versus Twilight Struggle, hands down. Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle. And I'm going to say Tainted Grail. <laughs> Underwater Cities versus Tainted Grail. I'm actually going to go Tainted Grail on this one. Uh, I'm actually going to go Underwater Cities. I really just, I like what it does. I'm okay if I don't play Underwater Cities anymore. I want to try Tainted Grail, so Tainted Grail. Uh, Underwater Cities versus Clank Legacy, uh, Legacy Acquisition Incorporated. I'm going to go with Underwater Cities. I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Underwater Cities as well. I agree, Underwater Cities. Clank Legacy for Acquisitions Incorporated versus Clans of Caledonia. I want to try Clans of Caledonia. I agree. Clans of Caledonia looks really fun. Uh, I'd probably say Clank Legacy, but... <laughs> Ooh, this one's a little tough for me. I like Zolkin a lot. I really do want to play Tricarian, uh, Tricarian Legends of Illusion. You've you really hyped that one up for me, so it better be good. Uh, but I'm going to pick Zolkin. Oh, no, it's not as good as I've hyped. It's really not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, just uh, having played one and not the other, I like the theme of one, but the gear mechanism and Zulkin for me would be Zulkin. I like them both really well. I'd probably go Zulkin though. Uh, Is Legend that the first Lewis? one? First edition. Okay. All right, so get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get Eddie. We need to get rid of these first editions. There you go. All right. Legend of Illusion versus Kingdom of Panther. I'm more interested in playing Tracarian. 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 Kingdom Death Monster versus Caverna of the Cave Partners. Both scary things that hide in dark caverns. <laughs> Caverna. I like Caverna a lot. I, I, it doesn't seem like it in this podcast because I voted against it every single time, and I'm still going to do it. I do want to try Kingdom Death Monster. I want to try a really good boss battle there. Tell the audience that you really hate it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like we know now. Uh, for me, it's, it'd be Caverna. Yep. Caverna moves on. All right. Kanban EV versus Kingdom Death Monster. I like the idea of Kanban, again, but I'm going to pick Kingdom Death Monster. I think there's a reason why it's so loved. In this case, between the two, Kanban interests me to play, but I think I, if I were to play them, I'd play more Kingdom Death Monster. You know, they're very different games, but they have a very similar cover, right? <laughs> you know, like, you just, if, if you just invert the colors, it's a very similar cover. I'm going to go Kanban. We have Cascadia versus the Castles of Burgundy. I'm going to have to go with the Castles of Burgundy. Castles of Burgundy. Same. Yep, hands down. Cascadia versus Terraforming Mars. Cascadia. I love Terraforming Mars. T-Mars. Terraforming Mars. T-Mars? T-Mars? <laughs> I, I mean, okay. That's cool. T-Mars? Cascadia versus Too Many Bones. I'm going to pick Cascadia. Uh, yep, Cascadia every time. Cascadia. Every time. It wasn't the last time. Yeah. <laughs> We've got Terramesca versus Too Many Bones. Uh, I really do like what Terramesca did. Terramesca. Terramesca. <sighs> Too Many Bones versus Brass Lancashire. I want to try Brass. Uh, I've tried Brass. I want to try Too Many Bones, but I'm going to go Brass as well. I'd go Too Many Bones. Uh, Spirit Island versus Teotihuacan. Uh, I like what the idea of Spirit Island. I love Teotihuacan. I got the deluxe edition for a reason, Teotihuacan. Just to make sure you haven't played Spirit Island, right? No. Okay, yeah. I'm Spirit Island heads up for me, but 
I just wanted to check. Spirit Island versus Imperial, uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault. Uh, I like the cooperative nature more in Star Wars Imperial Assault. I like the theme more. Spirit Island. Spirit Island. As much as I like Star Wars. Imperial Assault or uh, Through the Ages and Story of New Civilization, uh, Through the Ages. Through the Ages. I love Civ games. Actually, in this case, I'm probably still Star Wars Imperial Assault. Okay. Lords of Waterdeep versus Star Wars Imperial Assault. This one's kind of easy for me. This is Star Wars. <laughs> in this case, it's actually Lords of Waterdeep. This is hard for me because I don't, like, I don't know, maybe Star Wars, probably. Another easy one for me. <laughs> for me, Lords of Waterdeep. Versus Star Wars Lords Rebellion. Rebellion. Yeah. Um, yeah, Rebellion, I'm curious. Rebellion. Okay. Brass Birmingham versus Sleeping Gods, Brass Birmingham. Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods. Okay. Azul versus Brass Birmingham. I have played Brass of Birmingham in Azul. I'm picking Azul. Much simpler. Azul as well. Azul. Uh, Inish versus Brass Birmingham. I actually played Inish before. I'm more interested in playing Brass Birmingham. I think Brass Birmingham for me too. I've played both of these. Uh, honestly, Brass. Inish versus Lahav. Um, Lahav. Inish. Uh, I'm going to say... <laughs> okay, <No. we're> money. <laughs> I'm going to go with Inish, actually. I do like what Inish did. Cool. Lahav versus a Barrage. Hey, look, I can pick a new Rosa for a game because Barrage just looks way too heavy for my liking. Lahav. Actually, in this case, I think I want to learn Barrage. Lahav. <laughs> heavy I'm, versus heavy. Barrage <laughs> versus hegemony leader lead your class to victory. I'm gonna have to go with barrage. I'm gonna go barrage. Uh I would pick he hegemony just because it looks interesting to me, but I see why you guys went barrage. Quacks Quellenberg versus Scythe Quacks. Quacks. Scythe. <laughs> Ooh. You're Search for that. Planet You're X versus Scythe. Man, I like both of these games a lot. One of them I do own, though. And I'm going to pick Scythe. Uh, actually, this is not as hard for me as you think. I like Deduction, but I really like Scythe. <laughs> I'm going to go search for Planet X. Just because he wants to be different. <laughs> no, I just like the better. Oh, now, this one is tougher. Search for Planet X in Blood Rage. Actually, I'm going to have to go, I think, search for Planet X. Same. Uh, I would have gone Blood Rage myself, uh, but sure. Okay, Blood Rage versus Root, probably Blood Rage. Blood Rage for me. Blood Rage as well. Root versus Robinson Crusoe. I have not played either of these games. I'd pick Robinson Crusoe over Root any day of the week. I <laughs> uh, actually haven't played Root. I really want to play Robinson Crusoe, but I'd go Root. I'm going to go Robinson Crusoe as well. Heat versus uh, Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Uh, I like... Like I said, what Jaws of Lion does, but Heat is the game that gets to the table, period. Okay, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Uh, Battlestar Galactica versus Heat. Uh, probably BSG. I'm curious to try it. Heat for me. Uh, I want to try BSG. I just know Heat would play better in both my groups. Uh, like I said, I hunted down Battlestar Galactica, so it's got to be Battlestar Galactica. Great Western Trail, 2nd Edition versus Heat Pedal to the Metal. This one's easy for me. I'm going to pick Heat. Same here, Heat. Heat. Uh, Great Western Trail, 2nd Edition versus Beyond the Sun. <laughs> These choices are easy. Th this one's pretty easy, Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Yep. Uh, Great Western Trail, 2nd Edition versus Arkham Horror, the card game. Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror. Uh, probably Arkham Horror. Get rid of it. I'm getting Great rid Western of it. Trail first edition. Get out of here. All right, it's gone. Gaia Project versus Ark Nova. <laughs> I like zoos better than sci-fi to a certain extent. I love everything that the idea of Gaia Project. So much so I own the fantasy version. Ark Nova. I'm probably going to have to say Ark Nova. Ark Nova. Gaia Project versus El Grande. Both are semi-area control. I'm going to have to go with El Grande, I think. I really want to try El Grande more, I think, than Gaia Project. i got to rip my spiel winners. El Grande. El Grande. Gaia Project versus Power Grid. Power Grid. Hands Gaia down. Project. 
you need to give it another try. <laughs> uh, I would say probably theming wise, Guy Project. No, hold on. Before before Power Grid versus Guy Project, have knowing like even if you like Power Grid a lot, I think what Terra Mystica does, you would still pick that. I would still pick Guy Project yeah. over El- uh, Power Grid because it just seems a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Android Netrunner versus Power Grid. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, I know what you guys are going to pick, but man, that's really legitimately tough for me. Do I do. Know? I I do. I would pick Power Grid, though, I think. Just barely. You're picking Power Grid? Yeah. What am I going to pick? You're going to pick Netrunner. I'm going to pick Power Grid. What? I don't like Netrunner. <laughs> but you really dislike Power Grid. I just like the teach I got at Power Grid. <laughs> <laughs> right, if you were wanting to learn them, I would probably actually be more interested to learn Power Grid. Yeah. Power Grid is... It's, it's epic for a reason, right? Architects of the West Kingdom versus Grand Austria Hotel Architects. Architects as well. Hotel. <laughs> hotel, Motel, Austria. Uh, this one probably actually... I played Orleans. I want to learn Grand Austria Hotel. Grand Austria Hotel. Grand Austria Hotel. Yep. Orleans versus Race for the Galaxy. Probably Race for the Galaxy. Race for the Galaxy. I actually go Orleans in this one. Well, too bad. <laughs> Orleans versus the Gallerist. Ooh, this one's interesting. Uh, Gallerist looks interesting. I'd probably pick Orleans. i pick Orleans just because I like the bag building. Gallerist. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> Puerto Rico versus the Gallerist. Uh, I like what Puerto Rico does, period, so I'm going Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Yep. Gallerist versus Gloomhaven. Uh, Gloomhaven. Easy. Gloomhaven. Should we take out Jaws of the Lion next time we see it? <laughs> no, because it, it actually plays differently. It's basically a prequel to Gloomhaven. Mm, okay. yeah, I'd probably go Gloomhaven as well. Okay, Gloomhaven moves on. Five Tribes versus On Mars. And this this one hurts me because the, On Mars is the one I want to play, but out of these two, I'd pick Five Tribes. Uh, it's pretty easy. I like, I like Mars in space, but Five Tribes, hands yeah, down. <laughs> exactly what you said, Five Tribes. I love Mars in space, though. So. Ooh, space games. Mm-hmm. Eclipse, uh, second on for the galaxy, on Mars. I'm going to have to go Eclipse. Uh, I'd probably go on Mars. Oh, I don't like it. It's coming down to me. If I had to pick out of these two, I'd pick on Mars. Okay. Eclipse, second on for the galaxy versus Fields of Arrow. Um, I'd rather try a new Bay Rosenberg than a 4X, so Fields of Arrow. Eclipse. Eclipse. Okay. Fields of Arrow versus Food Chain Magnet. Fields of Arrow. Uh, yeah, Fields of Arrow. Fields of Arrow. <laughs> yep. Uh, Food Chain Magnet versus Frosthaven. Frosthaven. Fro- uh, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, that's tough for me, but I think Frosthaven, actually. Frosthaven. Yeah. I was jumping in over mm-hmm. Danny. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's Frosthaven. Uh, Paladins <laughs> of the West Kingdom versus Wingspan Paladins. Wingspan. Actually, in this case, I have to go Paladins. I like Paladins better. It's better. That's yeah. why... Everdale versus Wingspan. I like both of these games. Wingspan. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Wingspan. Wingspan. But actually, this versus is, Everdale. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go Everdale. Anachrony. Everdale. Okay. Anachrony versus the. Oh, uh, get rid right of that. You almost got me with the first edition Eclipse. Get out of here. Come on now. All right. Seven Wonders Duel versus War of the Rings Second Edition. Uh, Seven Wonders Duel. Ooh, this one's tough for me. I played one. I want to play the other. I'm going to go War of the Rings. They're both epic head-to-head games. Yeah. Yeah, this is tough for me as well. I've played a lot of Seven Wonders. I'm going to have to go War of the Ring, though, I think, because I really want to learn that one. Yep. Seven Wonders Duel versus Agricola, the revised edition. I play both. I like both. I'm going to go Seven Wonders Duel. Play both Agricola and Seven Wonders Duel. I like Seven Wonders Duel better. Agricola. Aeon Zen versus Agricola the right revised edition. Uh, I'm going Aeon Zen. Agricola. Aeon Zen. Agricola versus Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Pandemic Legacy Season Zero for me. Season Zero. I probably have to agree. I want to try Season Zero. That's really neat. Viticulture versus The Voyages of Marco Polo. Uh, this one's not that hard for me. I'm going to go Viticulture. Same here, Viticulture. Voyages of Marco Polo. <laughs> it's almost difficult. Almost. 
Uh, well, think about this, this is actually difficult for me. <laughs> we can't really get rid of the first uh, season one, uh, season two, or season zero because they play completely different in mm -hmm. a sense. <sighs> Pandemic Legacy season one versus one Voyage of Marco Polo. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> the question is, which one do I want to get back to the table more? I'd probably go Voyages of Marco Polo. Season one. Season one. Voyages of Marco Polo versus Obsession. Um, I haven't technically played either of them, but I have technically played one of them. Voyages of Marco Polo. Obsession. Voyages of Marco Polo. Season two versus Obsession. Uh, out of these two, I'd, I'd pick Obsession myself. I'd probably go Pandemic Legacy season two. Season two. Uh, for me, this is easy. Seven Wonders. I really like Seven Wonders. Versus Obsession, I'm going Obsession. Obsession. Seven Wonders versus A Feast for Odin. Seven Wonders. <laughs> seven Wonders? <laughs> I have seven Wonders. We were yes. not impressed with <laughs> Feast for Odin, apparently. I, I, I liked Feast for Odin, I but it, like it overstayed its welcome, yes. in all honesty. Yeah. All right, so Lost Ruins of Arnak versus Marvel Champions. I love both of these games. I love both implementations of these games. I pick Lost Ruins of Arnak. So this is a really tough decision, but it's not that tough yet, as Danny said. Lost Ruins of Arnak. Really? Yes. I mean, Arnak for me too, but wow. <laughs> Genuinely, I'm, I'm surprised. The Crew Quest for Planet Nine and Marvel Champions, the card game. Uh, ooh. I have to go Marvel Champions. The crew. Marvel Champions. The crew, the quest for Planet Nine versus Cthulhu, Death May Die. Uh, the crew. I like both of these games. I think they're both fantastic. I love Trick Ticking, but Cthulhu, Death May Die, just, oh my god, that one's so fun. Actually, I think I'm going to have to go with the crew. There you go. Cthulhu, Death May Die versus Decrypto. Again, this one's not that hard for me. It's going to be Cthulhu. Uh, same for me, it'll be Cthulhu. Decrypto. Decrypto versus Dune Imperium. There's no way. Never <laughs> thought you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Dune Imperium. Decrypto. Dune Imperium. Decrypto versus Osworn into the Deepwood. Decrypto. Decrypto. I'd probably go Osworn. Osworn oh, looks cool. Yeah. I, honestly, if it was going up against something else, yeah, yeah but yeah. Decrypto I like a lot. Old Sworn versus Mech versus Minion. I'm going to go Old Sworn on this one. Just to be different, huh? No, I... to be different. I, I'm not a big fan of programming games. I, I want to try a boss battler. Right. That's why you're different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually have to go Mech versus Minions. Mech versus Minions. Easy. Old Sworn <laughs> versus Crokinole. Um, I'm going to hmm. go Old Sworn. <laughs> Was it a boss battle again, Osworn? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Crokinole. Crokinole. <laughs> now that's one I wasn't expecting. <laughs> uh, Twilight Imperium 4th Edition versus Concordia. Concordia. This one's actually harder for me, in all honesty. I love both of these games. I'm actually going to give the nudge slightly to TI4. Uh, this, this one's easy, TI4. The yeah. theme. The theme, yeah. Twilight Struggle versus Concordia. Now you got Euros going up against with themes here. I pick Concordia. I'm going to have to go with Concordia as well. Concordia. Twilight Struggle versus <laughs> Nemesis. For me, this is Nemesis. Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle. Yeah. Nemesis versus Tainted Grail, the Fall of Avalon. I think Tainted Grail would probably be my pick. Nemesis. I'm going to have to go Nemesis. Okay. You already knew. Let's be real. Tainted Grill, The Fall of Avalon versus Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. As much as I do like Mansions of Madness, Tainted Grill. Let's go Tainted Grill. Tainted Grill. Underwater City versus Mansions of Madness. Underwater Cities. Yeah, Underwater Cities. Uh, for me, it would have been Mansions of Madness. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition versus Clans of Caledonia. Clans of Caledonia for me. Mansions of Madness. I have to go Mansions of Madness. Okay. Magic, uh, Clans of Caledonia versus Lisboa. Lisboa. Clans of Caledonia. I think I'm going to go Clans of Caledonia. It seems intriguing to me. Uh, Clank Legacy Acquisition Incorporated, Lisboa. For me, it's Clank Legacy. Lisboa. Lisboa. <laughs> Clank Legacy Acquisition Incorporated versus Mage Knight the Board Game. Um, Clank Legacy. Clank. I have to go Clank Legacy. Clank, the deck building game, versus Mage Knight, the board game. Mage Knight. I'm going to have to go Clank. 
Mage Knight. Ooh, Castles of Burgundy and That's, Zulkin. It's not even a new for me. I don't know, I really mm. like that gear. Yeah, that <laughs> gear's, gear. I, the, the, it's a really good gear. <laughs> that gear is making it tough. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and go Zulkin. I'm going to go Castles of Burgundy. So for me, and hear me out, if it was this copy of Castles of Burgundy, I'd probably pick Zulkin. But because I have the special edition, I'm going Castles of Burgundy. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Oh, mine? I believe so. Zulkin versus Terraforming Mars, Zulkin. <sighs> Another tough one for me. I'm going to go Terraforming Mars. Uh, for me, it's Terraforming Mars. Zulkin versus Cascadia. Out of these two, for me personally, Zulkin. Whew. Uh, I'm going to have to go Zulkin. Zulkin. Cascadia versus Trikrion, Legends of Illusion. I'm going Cascadia. Cascadia. Okay, cool. You didn't have to put it on me. Cascadia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trikrion versus Terra Mystica. Trikrion. Terra Mystica. Terra Mystica. Brass Lincolnshire. Do, do we want to keep both flat brasses, by the way? I've never played either of them, so I don't know how different they are. I don't know how different they are. I think this one's a little bit more complicated than Birmingham. Okay, let's keep them both then. Okay. Lincolnshire versus Tracarion. I pick Tracarion. Uh, I think I'd want to learn Tracarion more. Tracarion. Easy. Oh, uh, Boss Lincolnshire versus uh, Caverna, the Cave Farmers. Caverna. This is the reason why we should have Lincolnshire on it, because if we if we have a Agricola and Caverna, we should have those two. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to go Caverna. Caverna. See, I picked Caverna. Lancashire versus Kingdom Death Monster. Um, I'm going to go Lancashire. Kingdom Death Monster. I'm going to have to go Lancashire. Just because I like saying Lancashire. I think that's why. Too Many Bones versus Kingdom Death Monster. Oh, Kingdom Death Monster. Yep, easy. Uh, for me, it's probably Too Many Bones. Kingdom Death Monster. Too Many Bones versus Kanban EV. What do these games not have in common? <laughs> Everything? <laughs> Everything? All of it, yes. Uh, I'm probably going to say too many bones. I'm more interested in learning to play that. Kanban. Kanban. Alright, Teotihuacan versus Sleeping Gods. Teotihuacan. Sleeping Gods. I'm going to have to go with Sleeping Gods. Cool. Teotihuacan versus Azul. Uh, Teotihuacan. I'm going to have to go with Azul. Azul. That's surprising. Te, uh, Brass Birmingham versus Teotihuacan. Uh, I'm going to have to go Teotihuacan. Uh, Brass Birmingham. Teotihuacan. Brass Birmingham versus Spirit Island. No contest, Spirit Island. Spirit Island. I have to agree with Spirit Island. Civ, uh, or <laughs> Through the Ages, A New Story Civilization. Brass Birmingham, uh, Through the Ages. I would play Through the Ages before, again, before uh, Brass Birmingham. Uh, through the Ages, yep. Brass Birmingham versus Star Wars Imperial Assault. Uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault. Brass. It's all Brass. New. Imperial Assault versus Inish. Inish. Star Wars. Let's go Star Wars Imperial Assault. Star Wars Rebellion versus Inish. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to call it the new game if they don't change games, uh, just to make it faster. Star Wars Rebellion. Uh, in this case, I think Star Wars Rebellion. Inish. Uh, Inish versus Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, Lords of Waterdeep. Inish. Inish. Lords of Waterdeep versus Lahav. 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 Mm. Lords of Waterdeep. Now, we're at the point, I'm going to pause this real quick, where we can start just, like, saying the ones. Should we start speeding this up even more instead of sure. taking turns? All right. And then if we need to say why we're saying it, we'll say yeah. it. Okay. All right. So, Barrage versus Lords of Waterdeep. Lords of Waterdeep. Barrage. Lords of Waterdeep. Okay. Gloomhaven, Jaws of Lion versus Quacks of Quedlinburg. Quacks. Quacks, yeah. Gloomhaven, Jaws of Lion versus Scythe. Scythe. Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Scythe versus Battlestar Galactica. Scythe. BSG. Scythe. BSG versus Search for Planet X. Planet X. Planet X, yeah. No, BSG. <laughs> BSG versus Blood Rage. Blood Rage. BSG. 
Oh, great. Ah. <laughs> 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 BSG, I want to get at the table more. Yep. Blood Rage versus Heat, pedal to the metal. Heat. Heat. Heat, yeah. Blood Rage versus Beyond the Sun. Blood Rage. Beyond the Sun. Blood Rage. <laughs> Beyond the Sun versus Robinson Crusoe. Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun, Beyond the sun yeah. Robinson Crusoe versus Arkham Horror, the card game. Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror. Mm, Robinson, probably. Robinson Crusoe versus Great Western Trail, second edition. Robinson, Robinson Crusoe. Crusoe. Yep. Great Western Trail, second edition versus Root. Trail. Root. <laughs> it's on me. <laughs> yeah, it's on me. Uh, root. Okay. Architects of the West Kingdom versus Ark Nova. Ark Nova. Ark Nova. Ark Nova, yeah. Architects of the West Kingdom versus El Grande. El Grande. Grande. Yeah, Architects. Architects of the West Kingdom versus Gaia Project. Architects. Gaia Project. Architects. 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 Yeah. Gaia Project versus Grand Austria Hotel. Gaia. Gaia Project. Yeah, I was going to say Grand Austria Hotel. <laughs> really? I thought about it. Power Grid versus Grand Austria Hotel. Austria. Power Grid. <laughs> <laughs> We're just answering so fast, it's just on you. Yeah. Unless we agree, yeah, it's yeah. on you. Yeah. Uh, Power Grid. All right. Grand Austria Hotel versus Android Netrunner. Austria. Austria. Netrunner. Austria. Netrunner versus Race for the Galaxy. Netrunner. Race for the Galaxy. <laughs> Actually, I'm more interested in learning that runner. Okay. Paladins of the West Kingdom versus Ooh, Five Tribes. Five Tribes. Five Tribes. Yeah. yeah. I was figuring it was going Five Tribes. Actually, yeah. Five Tribes is ranked higher. In my Paladins team. of the West Kingdom versus On Mars. Paladins. Paladins. On Mars. I want to try it. On Mars versus Wingspan. Wingspan. On Mars. On Mars versus Everdell. On Mars. Everdell. On Mars. Everdell versus Eclipse, Dawn for the, Dawn for the second, second Dawn, Dawn for the Dawn. Galaxy. Everdell. Uh, probably Eclipse. Eclipse. Yeah. Everdell versus Fields of Arl. Fields of Arl. Everdell. Okay. Fields of Arl versus Anachrony. Anachrony. Fields of Arl. Anachrony. Fields of Arl versus Pax Premier. Fields of Arl. Fields of Arl. <laughs> Pax Premier versus Frosthaven. 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 Pax Premier versus Food Chain Magnate. Ooh. Uh, probably Pax. Food Chain. Pax. <laughs> Viticulture Essential Edition was War of the Rings Second Edition. Viticulture. War of the Rings. Viticulture. War of the Rings Second Edition, Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Legacy. Season 1. What would you have picked? I don't know. <laughs> are you, just, are, you, are you breaking down? Like a, no, no. Uh, I don't have to make the decision. I'm not type picker anymore. Yeah. Voyages of Marco Polo versus War of the Ring Second Edition. Voyages. War of the Ring. War of the Ring. Okay. Voyages of Marco Polo versus Some Wonders Duel. Marco Duel. Polo. <laughs> Marco Polo. Okay. Some Wonders Duel versus Pandemic Legacy Season Two. Seven Wonders Duel. 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 Okay. Pandemic Legacy Season 2 versus Aeon's End. Aeon's End. Aeon's End. Okay. Pandemic Legacy Season 2 versus Season <laughs> 0. 2. I'm more interested in playing 2. I'm saving for making Season 2, actually, yeah. <laughs> saving for making the decision. Obsession versus Season Obsession. 0. 0. Season 0. Obsession versus Agricola Revised Edition. Obsession. Agricola. Dom. <laughs> I'm going to say Agricola. Damn it, Dom. <laughs> well, right, well, got... <laughs> Get rid of that. What are you trying to pull here? Come on now. All right. Twilight Imperium 4th Edition versus Lost Ruins of Arnak. Ruin. TI4. Ruins. Wow. All right. TI4 versus Marvel Champions. TI4. Marvel Champions. <laughs> Choose which one you love more, Dom. <laughs> which of your children will you keep, <laughs> and which will you sacrifice? Good news, I don't have to get rid of either one. Uh, Yet, no. <laughs> Marvel Champions. Okay. Ti four versus the crew. Quest for Planet Nine. Ti four. Ti four. Ti four. The crew. Quest for Planet Nine versus Concordia. 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 Yeah. Yep. The crew. Quest for Planet Nine versus Twilight Struggle. Twilight, Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle. The crew, the quest for Planet Nine versus Nemesis. The crew. Nemesis. Nemesis. Okay. The crew, quest for Planet Nine versus Tainted Grail, the fall of Babylon. Probably Tainted Grail for me. The crew. 
<laughs> You're putting no. it on him on purpose. <laughs> no, I no, would pick no, out of these two, I'd pick the crew. I the know. crew. Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon versus Cthulhu, Death May Die. Cthulhu. Death May Die. Okay. I really need to try that one. I think that's why. Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon versus Dune Imperium. Tainted Grail. Dune. Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon versus Decrypto. 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 Yeah, Tainted Grail. Yeah. What else I want to try? Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon versus Mechs versus Minions. Mechs. Tainted. Tainted. Mechs versus Minions versus Underwater Cities. Mechs. Underwater Cities. Mechs versus Minions versus Mansions of Madness. That's a lot of M's. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of M's here. Max. Max. Max, yeah. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition versus Crokinole. Crokinole. <laughs> Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition versus Osworn Into the Deepwood Mansions. Osworn. Osworn. Okay. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition versus Maracaibo. Maracaibo. Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition versus Dominant Species. Mansions. Dominant Species. Mansions. Dominant Species versus Clans of Caledonia. Clans. Clans, yeah. <laughs> yeah, clans. Dominant Species versus Lisboa. 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 Dominant Species versus Clank Legacy Acquisitions Incorporated. Clank. Dominant Species. Dominant Species. No. Sleeping Gods versus Castle Burgundy. That's uh, Castle of Burgundy. Sleeping Gods. Castles. Sleeping Gods versus Terraforming Mars. Sleeping Gods. Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars. Okay. Sleeping Gods versus Zolkin. Zolkin. Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods. Okay. Zolkid versus Azul. Azul. Zolkin. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta speed this along, fellas. Azul. We got this. Yep, Azul. Alright. Zolkin versus Teotihuacan. Zolkin. 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 Teotihuacan versus Cascadia. Cascadia. Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. Okay. Cascadia versus Spirit Island. Spirit Island. Spirit Island. Cascadia. Cascadia versus Through the Ages a Story of New Civili uh, Story of Civilization. Cascadia. It's uh Through the Ages. Through the Ages. What did I say? You said Cascadia. Oh. Cascadia Oh, oh okay, never mind. Are, are you saying I Cascadia? You were, yeah, Cascadia. I thought you were yeah. correcting me. I was like, No, 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 it's through the ages. Yeah, I thought I said something uh, other than uh, Cascadia. Previous. That's why I was confused. Cascadia moves on. Alright. Through the Ages versus Terra Mystica. Terra Mystica. Through the Ages. Terra Mystica. Okay. Through the Ages versus Tricurion. Tricurion. Through the ages. Through the ages. Okay. Tricarion versus Brass Birmingham. Tricarion. Tricarion. Brass. Brass Birmingham versus Caverna. 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 Brass Birmingham versus Brass Lancashire. Birmingham. We have it finally. <laughs> Birmingham is what I've been hearing is probably better. Sure. Star Wars Imperial Assault versus Lancashire. Star Wars. Lancashire. Brass Star Lancashire Wars. Star Wars. <laughs> okay, I didn't even finish, fellas. <laughs> Just All say right. the new one that's coming up, because they're not changing. All right, cool. Rise Birmingham versus Inish. 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 Yeah, Inish. Brass, Birmingham, or Langenshire versus Lahav. I'm just going to continue, because um, yeah. it'll break my brain otherwise. It'll take me more time to think. Lahav. Lahav. Langenshire, but... Lords of Waterdeep versus Brass, Brink, Langenshire, Lords Brass. of Waterdeep. Bards. Brass, Langenshire versus Barrage. Barrage. Barrage, Barrage. yeah. Brass Lancashire versus Hegemony. Hegemony. Brass. Brass, probably. Hegemony versus Kingdom Death Monster. Kingdom. 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 Hegemony versus Kanban EV. Hegemony. Kanban. Hegemony versus Too Many Bones. Hegemony. Hegemony. <laughs> Too Many Bones? <laughs> Ark Nova versus Quacks Quedlinburg. Quacks. Ooh. Thanks, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. <sighs> One's just arguably better. I know, Ark. Who <laughs> <laughs> little quacks. Yeah. Ark Nova versus Gloomhaven Jaws of Lion. Ark Gloomhaven. Nova. Nova. Gloomhaven Jaws of Lion versus El Grande. 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 That's a Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven Ar versus Ark Architects. Architects. Gloomhaven. <laughs> Gloomhaven Jaws of Lion versus Gaia Project. Gloomhaven. Gaia Gloomhaven. Project. Gloomhaven. Scythe versus Gaia Project. Scythe. Scythe, Scythe yeah. Guy Project versus Search for Planet X. Search. Gaia Project. Planet X. Guy Project versus BSG. 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 Yep. <laughs> Guy Project versus Heat. 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 Yep. Guy Project versus Blood Rage. Blood Gaia Rage. Project. Blood Rage. Guy Project versus Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Guy Project versus Arkham Horror, the card game. Arkham Horror. Guy Ar Project. Arkham Horror. 
Gaia Project versus Robinson Crusoe. Gaia. Gaia. Yep. Robinson Crusoe versus Power Grid. Power Grid. Robinson Crusoe. Mm -hmm. What he said. Yep. <laughs> Power Grid versus Root. Power Grid. Power Grid. Mm. Root versus Grand Austria Hotel. Austria. Yeah, Austria. Mm -hmm. Root versus Android Netrunner. Root. Netrunner. Root. <laughs> All right, Android Netrunner versus Great Western Trail, second edition. Great Western Trail. Netrunner. Great Western Trail. Viticulture versus Five Tribes. Five Tribes. Viticulture. Viticulture. Yeah. Five Tribes versus Pandemic Legacy, season one. Season Five one. Tribes. Five Tribes. Season one versus Paladins of the West Kingdom, season one. Paladins. Paladins. Season one versus Wingspan, season one. Wingspan. Wingspan. <laughs> Season 1 versus On Mars, season 1 for me. On Mars. On Mars is literally the one little Serda I want to play. I have to go on Mars. Okay, season 1 versus Eclipse. 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 Season 1 versus Everdell. Season, season one. 1. War of the Ring versus Everdell. War of the Ring. Yeah. Well, yeah. Everdell versus Voyage of Marco Polo. Polo. Everdell. Polo. Where we go? Right. Someone is dual versus Everdell. Seven Everdell. Wonders. Seven Wonders dual. Everdell versus Aeon's End. Aeon's, Aeon's, Aeon's End. Aeon's End. Aeon's End. Yep. So Everdell versus Pandemic Season 2. Everdell. Season 2. Season 2. That was the correct choice. Pandemic Legacy Season 0 versus Everdell. Everdell. Season 0. 0. Everdell versus Agricola. Agricola. Everdell. Everdell. Agricola versus Anachrony. Agricola. Anachrony. Anachrony. Agricola versus Fields of Arl. Agricola. Agricola. Battle of the Uves. <laughs> Fields of Arl versus Obsession. Obsession. Fields of Arl. Uh, I'm going to go Fields of Arl. Okay, we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. Frosthaven versus Obsession. Frosthaven. Frosthaven. Okay. Obsession versus Pax Premier. Obsession. Obsession. Pax Premier versus Seven Wonders. Pax Seven Premier. Wonders. Seven Wonders. Really? Okay. Pax Premier versus a Feast for Odin? Pax, Pax Premier. <laughs> Feast for Odin versus Food Chain Magnet. Feast. Feast. <laughs> Wait, uh, Food Chain. I do really want to try it. Castle Burgundy versus Arnak. Burgundy. Arnak. Terraform Mars versus Arnak. Arnak. Terraform Mars. Which I had to think do, about that for a minute. Which one do you love more? <laughs> Or which one do you hate more is really what we're at. No. They're both in my top ten. Terraform and Mars is higher. Team right. Mars then? Team Mars. Team Mars. Ruins of Arnak versus Sleeping Gods. Arnak. <sighs> Sleeping Gods. I do want to try Sleeping Gods eventually, but... They're both in my top ten, but Arnak is higher. <laughs> Sleeping Gods versus Marvel Champions. <laughs> this is hurting Sleeping me. Gods. Sleeping Gods for me. Yeah. yeah. Marvel Champions versus Azul. Azul. Marvel. Marvel Champions. Azul versus TI4. TI4. Azul. TI4. Azul versus Concordia. Concordia. Azul. Yeah, Azul. Concordia versus Zolkin. Oh. Concordia. Zolkin. <laughs> Zolkin. All right, Concordia, Teotihuacan. Concordia. 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 Teotihuacan, Twilight Struggle. Teotihuacan. Teotihuacan. Twilight Struggle versus Spirit Island. Spirit Island. Twilight Struggle. Spirit Island. Cascadia or Twilight Struggle? Cascadia. Oh, that's a hard one for me. Uh, I'll make it easy, Cascadia. Okay. <laughs> Twilight Struggle versus Terra Mystica? Terra Mystica. Struggle. Terra Mystica. Twilight Struggle versus Through the Ages? Through the Ages. Twilight Struggle. Through the Ages. Twilight Struggle versus Tricurion? Uh, Tricurion. There you go. Twilight yeah. Struggle. I like Twilight Struggle, but I want to try Tricurion. Out of these two, I'd rather get Tricurion to the table. I'm picking Twilight Struggle. I think I'm going to go with Twilight Struggle in this one. Yep. Tricurion versus Nemesis. Nemesis. Tricurion. Nemesis. You guys have the Nemesis love. The Crew versus Tricurion. Tricurion. The, the Crew. Tricurion versus Cthulhu Death May Die. Cthulhu Tricurion. Death May Die. <laughs> yep, of course. Tricurion versus Dune Imperium. Tricurion Dune. still. Imperium. Tricurion versus Decrypto. 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 <laughs> Tainted Grail versus Tricurion. Tainted. Tricurion. <laughs> Tricurion. 
Put it on him. That's that, right. Caverna versus Tate Tainted. Grail. Caverna. Caverna. Tate Grail versus Brass Birmingham. Tainted. Tainted. This must be really boring for anybody listening to this. <laughs> Brass Birmingham versus Underwater Cities. I'm going to go Brass. <laughs> Underwater Cities. Ooh. It's on you. Uh, brass. Okay, Underwater Cities versus Star Wars Imperial Assault. Star Wars Imperial Assault. Underwater Cities. Underwater Cities. Star Wars Imperial Assault versus Max vs. Minions. Max. Star Wars. Star Wars. Max vs. Minions versus Star Wars Rebellion. Star Wars. Max. Star Wars. Max vs. Minions versus Inish. Max. 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 Inish versus Crokinole. Crokinole. Inish. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, David. Crokinole? <laughs> Inish versus Osworn. 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 Inish versus Maracaibo. 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 Inish versus Mansion of Madness. Inish. Mansions. Mansions. Inish versus Clans of Caledonia. Clans. Inish. Clans. Inish versus Lisboa. 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 Inish versus Dominant Species. Inish. Dominant Species? Oh, dominant Species versus Lahav. Lahav. Dominant Species. It's on you. Lahav. Yeah. The Harbor. Lord's Water Deep versus Lord's. Dominant Species. Dominant. <laughs> dominant. Lord's Water Deep versus Clank Legacy Acquisitions Acquired. Lord's Water Deep. Clank. Lord's Water Deep versus Mage Knight. Lord's. Mage Knight. <laughs> Mage Knight. Lords of Waterdeep versus Clank a Deck Building Adventure. Clank. Lords of Waterdeep. <laughs> Lords of Waterdeep? <laughs> I guess that's mine. Clank versus Barrage. Clank. Clank. Alright, Viticulture versus Quacks. Viticulture. Vidi. Quacks. Quacks versus Five Tribes. Five Tribes. Quacks. Five tribes. Quacks versus Paladins. Quacks. Quacks. Paladins versus Dark Nova. Dark Nova. Dark. Paladins versus El Grande. Paladins. <laughs> Wingspan versus El Grande. Wingspan. Wingspan. El Grande. This, I mean, I bet nobody's listening now. All right, El Grande versus On Mars. On, El on Grande. Mars. Yeah, On Mars. Eclipse, Second Dawn versus El Grande. El Grande. Eclipse. Eclipse. El Grande versus Pandemic Legacy Season 1. Season El one. Grande. El Grande. Season 1 versus Architects. 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 Season 1. <laughs> Season 1 versus Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Jaws of Lion. Season 1. Season 1. Gloomhaven, Jaws of Lion versus War of the Rings, 2nd edition. Uh, Gloomhaven. Probably War of the Ring. War of the Ring. Alright, Gloomhaven versus The Voyages of Marco Polo. Gloomhaven. Jaws of the Lion, by the way. Yeah, Jaws of the Lion, sorry. Jaws of the Lion. I'll just start saying Jaws of the Lion. Uh, Marco Polo. It's on you, Dom. Marco Polo. Damn it, Dom. Seven Wonders Duel versus Jaws of the Lion. Jaws of the Lion. Jaws of the Lion. Duel. Yeah. Seven Wonders Duel versus Search for Planet X. Planet Duel. X. Planet X. Seven Wonders Duel versus BSG. <laughs> BSG. BSG. Yeah, same. Seven Wonders Duel versus Heat. 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 Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders Duel versus Blood Rage. Duel. Rage. Rage. Seven Wonders Duel versus Beyond the Sun. Duel. Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Someone wonders Duel versus Arkham Horror, the card game. Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror. Someone wonders Duel versus Gaia Project. So Gaia. Gaia. Mm-hmm. Robinson Crusoe versus Seven Wonders Duel. Seven, Seven Wonders Duel. Robinson Crusoe versus Aeon's End. Aeon's End. Aeon's Aeon's end. End. All right. Aeon's End it is. All right. Pandemic Legacy Season 2 versus Robinson Crusoe. Season 2. Let's just speed run. Let's not even mention the, the, the thing here. Season 2. Robinson Crusoe versus Season Zero. Crusoe. Season Zero. Zero. Everdale versus Robinson Everdale. Crusoe. Robinson. Everdale. Robinson Crusoe versus Anachrony. 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 Mm-hmm. Robinson Crusoe versus Agricola. 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 Robinson Crusoe versus Fields of Arl. Arl. Robinson, Robinson Crusoe. Robinson. All right. Power Grid versus Fields of Arl. Power Grid. Fields of Arl. Power Grid. Fields of Arl versus Grand Austria Hotel. Austria. Fields of Arl. Grand Austria Hotel. Fields of Arl versus Root. Arl. Fields. Root versus Frosthaven. 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 Yeah, Frosthaven. Root versus Obsession. Obsession. Root. Obsession. 
Root versus Seven Wonders. Seven, seven wonders. wonders. Root versus Pax Premier. Root. Pax. Root. Pax Premier versus Great Western Trail. Pax. Great Western Trail. Great Western Trail. Pax Premier versus Android Netrunner. Pax. Netrunner. Pax. Android Netrunner versus Feast for Odin. Netrunner. Uh. <laughs> uh. Which one's going to hurt less? Feast. Feast. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Netrunner on this one. Don't believe the hate from me. <laughs> Race for the Galaxy versus Feast for Odin. Race. Race. Or the Orleans versus... Uh, versus the Feast for Odin. Feast. Feast. Orleans versus Food Chain Magnet. Orleans. Orleans. Food Chain. Puerto, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Alright, uh, what's gonna go for it? Yep. Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Gallerist. Gallerist. Yeah. Alright. Uh, Burgundy. Burgundy. Viticulture. 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 Five tribes. Terraforming Mars. Terraforming Mars. Five tribes. Arnak. Five tribes. Quacks. Quacks. Arnak. Ark. Oh, shoot. Arnak. Sleeping Ark gods. gods. Champions. Ark. Paladins. Wingspan. Champions. Wingspan. On Mars. Champions. Champions. TF4. <laughs> Azul. Eclipse. Azul. Zulkin. Zulkin. Concordia. Concordia. Eclipse. Oh, this one's actually tough for me. Tap the walking. You go Eclipse. El Grande. El Grande. Architects. See, it's walking. Architects. Season one. Season one. War of the Ring. Tattoo walking. Mm, I agree. Cascadia. Cascadia. Terra Mystica. Terra Mystica. Civ or Through the Ages. Through the Ages. Twilight. Struggle. Mm. War. Nemesis. Nemesis. War. The crew. Yeah, the crew. Cthulhu. Uh, War of the Ring. Cthulhu. War of the Ring. Dune. Mm -hmm. Decrypto. War, War of the, the Ring. Ring. Decrypto. Marco Polo. Decrypto. Tricarion. Marco, Marco Polo. Polo. Alright, Jaws of Pause Lion. real quick. If you're listening to this, I don't blame you for skipping to the end. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Jaws of Lion versus Tricarion. Tricarion. Yeah, you can tell we're getting tired now. Yeah, we, we need to end this. this Jaws is of the Lion. Tricarion. Tricarion. Uh, Jaws of the Lion. Jaws, yeah. Scythe. Scythe. Caverna. Planet X. Planet X. BSG. BSG. Heat. Caverna. Caverna. Tainted Grail. Heat. Blood Tainted. Rage. Rage. Tainted. Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun. Tainted. Arkham Horror. Tainted. Brass. Mm, Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror. Brass. Gaia. To you, damn it. <laughs> Uh, probably brass. We're almost there. We're almost there. Underwater. Gaia. Underwater. Gaia. Gaia. Seven Wonders. Oh, seven Wonders. Aeon's End. Aeon's End. Season 2. Imperial Salt. Imperial Salt. Season Rebellion. Two. Rebellion. Um, season 2. Season 2. Season zero. Out of these two, season zero. Max. Everdale. Max. Crokinole. Everdale. Everdale, yeah. Anachrony. Anachrony. Agricola. Bullsworn. Maracaibo. Maracaibo. Mansions. Agricola. 
mansions. Agricola. Clans. Agricola. Clans. Clans. Robinson. <laughs> Lisboa. Robinson. Probably Robinson, actually. Power grid. Lisboa. You have to go Lisboa. Power grid. Inish. Power grid. Austria. Austria. Oh, crap. Undo. No! <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I had to undo the pick. Oh, is there an undo button? Yeah. Yes. Oh, right okay. Good man, good man. All right. Fields of Arl. Inish. Inish. Okay. Le Havre. Fields of Arl. They're all Uves. Le Havre. That one is Arl. species. Fields of Arl. Frosthaven. Frosthaven. Possession. Dominant species. Put this on Danny. Obsession. Seven wonders. Dominant. Seven wonders. Ooh. Dominant. Root. Root. Dominant. Great, Great Western Trail. Trial. Dominant. Pax. Dominant. Clank. Pax. Oh. Sorry, Dom. Uh, Clank. We're in the final stretch. Major Knight. Knight. Lords. Pax. Lords. Clank. Pax. Pax. Netrunner. Clank. Clank. Netrunner. Barrage. Barrage. Netrunner. Brass. Netrunner. Really? Ooh. Race. Race. Brass. Beast for Odin. Feast. Brass. Brass. Kingdom Death Monster. Orleans. Kingdom Death Monster. Orleans. Orleans. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Gloomhaven. Mm. Obviously. Uh, Vita Lacerda, why? Gallist. Probably uh, Kanban. Probably Kanban. Hegemony. 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 Gallerist. Too many bones. Too many bones. All right. <laughs> we reached the end here. So let's let's review this real quick. We're going to do this. Um, Daniel, would you also want to pull up another window real quick? And we'll compare it side by side versus the, the, the actual Board Game Geek Top 100. Because let, let's do this before we re really delve into it. Because this is worth, worth seeing. All right. Move this over so we want to thank you so much for sitting through that. I'm sure everyone's still oh, here. Oh, it's so riveting. Yep, I'm sure. I, I I don't see where it shows our viewership like it normally does well, it's on this I... page. But, um, yeah, I am guessing that uh, there is negative points at this point. But now we're going to get into the fun part. We're going to look at the top versus how we just re-ranked everything. So... What, let's look at the top one to one. So Brass Birmingham was the original. Castle Burgundy is ours. Are you surprised by that? No, I like castles a lot. No, it, no. There, there was one of four games that I would not have been surprised. Yeah, Viticulture, Terraforming Mars, Five Tribes, Quacks of Quellenberg. Those are all really big on our end. Um, In fact, we have a different top five than their top five. I'm gonna step out real quick. All right, uh, so just going into this one real quick, uh, Quacks, Viticulture, Terraforming Mars, Five Tribes, uh, well, sorry, let me say, Castles of Burgundy, Viticulture, Terraforming, Five Tribes, Quacks, Lost Ruins of Arnak, Sleeping Gods, Ark Nova, Paladins of the West Kingdom, and Wingspan are our top ten. Uh, comparative to the BGG top ten, I think we had two? Uh, terraforming and... Uh, no, we didn't get Vintage. any, oh, we had one, we, we had one. Terraforming Mars. And Ark Nova. Oh, Ar oh, yeah, Ark Nova is in our top ten, too, right? Yeah, yep. number eight. So we had two of the BGG top ten in our top ten. Which ones? We had Ark Nova and Terraforming Mars. Uh, BGG's number seven, Terraforming Mars was our number three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ark Nova was the number eight. Ark Nova is their number four. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That, we agree on that part. 
otherwise, uh, Marvel Champions uh, just squeaked out on Mars, a game that we haven't played, but everything we saw about it we thought we would like more actually made it just outside our top ten. <laughs> yeah, number 11, having none of us played it. Yeah, so that that's interesting to me. Uh, TI4 just missed out of the top ten, which is in the BGG top ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, going down here, Great Western Trail, Through the Ages, Spirit Island, Gaia Project, Twilight Struggle, Castles of Burgundy, which was our number one, is uh, the top 116. Scythe, uh, Eclipse Second Dawn, Seven Wonders Duel, and Brass Lancashire are the rounding out the top 20 for us. It is the on Mars, as we said, uh, Marvel Champions, Twilight Imperium, Azul, Zulkin, Concordia. Eclipse, Second Dawn, El Grande, and Architects of the West Kingdom, and Pandemic Season 1, which mm -hmm. is, their number two is our number 20. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, where, I mean, that, did, that's my number two, so. Where is Brass Birmingham on our list? Because yeah. that is the number one. Let's find out. I mean, it's apparently low enough, right? It is 45 45 on our list. Just between Underwater Cities and Arkham Horror, the card game. So what do you guys think of our list comparative to the BGG list that we're seeing here? Well, I think if you guys would have listened to me more, it would have been a lot more congruent. No, <laughs> no I, I like our list. Um, I, you know, like, like stuff like Power Grid being number 65, right? Yeah. I, I get stuff like that. I understand it because of the experiences, but also at the same time, like, look at Puerto Rico. It's number 88. Gloomhaven is number 89. They did take out the right? six games we eliminated, so just, I told you. Right. You, I was so, right, you were wrong. Was that? Yeah, yeah. No. Wait, what? The six games that we took out, it doesn't get in our top 100. Right. Yeah, I know. So That's we only have a top it. 94. No, so what we're going to do is, like, say, Agricola, the regular edition, is one space below Agricola Revised Edition. The uh, Through the Ages, first okay. edition, is right below Through the Ages, second edition. That's fine. That, that's just... We yeah, fill those no, six in, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, either way. I'm not surprised. Food chain, Food chain magnet, magnet was, was our 100. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of the surprising ones. What was number? I'm uh, surprised 100? Gloomhaven is that low. Yeah. Really? I, I, Gloomhaven being that low. Actually, the surprise for me is Puerto Rico. Yep. I, I would have figured that would have been higher. Well, hold on. I'm looking for the Frosthaven's actually higher than Gloomhaven. Yes. And I'm trying. I know Jaws of the Lion is probably the highest Gloomhaven game here, just because we really love the way they teach that game. I'm just trying to see. Yep, there you go, number thirty-five. Number thirty-five. So that's not bad. So, so number one hundred in the top one hundred mm -hmm. is. And where did it place on ours? So their number one hundred is Tracurion, which is thirty-four on ours. Thirty-four on ours. Architects is ninety-nine. Mm -hmm. I think Architects actually landed pretty high on ours. Number nineteen. Unfortunately, yeah. So uh, Battlestar Galactica ninety-eight. Uh, it actually landed pretty high too, if I recall. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a wild list, right? And so we're we're not gonna we just list it off like like three hundred choices, right? This was like a speed run that we yeah. so after a while we're like done, 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 right? So we will find a way to like post this list somewhere. We don't know where we'll put it, um, but you know, wherever we end up putting it somewhere, you can put it in. We'll have it in the description. We'll save it for now. And we'll share it with people later on once we have the ability to do so. Uh, but with that being said, we hope you have enjoyed this episode. This was really fun for us. Dom, first episode on, on the podcast with us. What do you think? I don't know. I liked it. It was fun. It was fun re-ranking the top 100 yep. just to see where... It, it got a little are. iffy for us, especially towards the end, because we are just getting tired. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So are you, at some point in the future, if we have an interesting topic, you're going to join us again? If we yeah, need a tiebreaker? Yeah, that can, be, that can happen. All right, All right, sounds cool. good. Well, we hope, thank you for being our special guest today. Um, so if you ever want to join us uh, and contact us directly, tell us your thoughts on how we re-ranked and why you disagree with us. You can email us directly at everydayboardgames2020 at gmail.com, whether that's to give us ideas, to say hello, or enter in future contests. Also follow us on Instagram at instagram.com slash everydayboardgames. As well as all video re-uploads are found on YouTube under youtube.com slash at everydayboardgames. And if you like what we do, there are three things you can do to help us grow on that platform. Subscribe if you're not, like the video, and comment down below and tell us your thoughts on the subject. Also, we stream our episodes live as our friend Illuminous joined us today and anybody else who tuned in to watch us live. Uh, got, you know, so sorry about this. <laughs> yeah, sorry <laughs> so about we're, that. We're going to apologize about how boring that probably got after the first hour. But either way, we stream it live. Come comment on your thoughts when you're with us. 
join us at twitch.tv slash everyday board games as well as all audio versions can be found on most podcast platforms under everyday board games podcast this includes spotify google amazon music podbean and apple however i don't think google podcast uh lives anymore i think they're integrating it into youtube so interesting just okay. fyi so again youtube follow us there um, also comment below it helps the algorithm so like whether you hate us or not whatever it's cool so we want to thank you so much for tuning in as always i've been your host daniel and i've been your host daniel and i'm damn it dom <laughs> and we want to thank you for listening to everyday board games and remember every day is a good day for board gaming